Sup y'all, I'm Zay. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Obviously, I hate talking about this topic again, but here I am, two months later, dealing with it. While I'm not really sure what Omni is hoping to gain or what their goal is in making these videos, I do want to debunk some of the major points of them as to avoid any misunderstandings or misinformation. I also want to take accountability for some of the things I was mistaken about in regards to this whole process, which I promise you is not much. For the sake of time, I'll be speeding up Omni's clips, but I won't be following their example and cutting context out of any of them. I also want to make this response very, very quick because not everyone has the time to watch three hours worth of content in regards to fucking guy wise. <laughs> I'll be responding to the major points of each part of the series and wrapping everything up with some tweets that I thought were important and needed my specific take. I'm saying this in reference to the fight Omnia had with Peaches and Lyle Convoy, which was frankly pretty unnecessary and really stupid on Omnia's part, but I digress. I'll get into it later. Let's tackle some of the major points of the first part of Omnia's video. Omnia opens their series up with their first video, The Court Case Conclusion, Myths and Realities, which they ironically tagged with John Swan Kai Weiss. Give me a break. <laughs> ...has just recently ended, and that's what the main content of this particular video is about. The thing is, though, I only spoke about the details relating to the case through tweets exclusively between December 10th, 2021 and March 16th, 2022. After that point, I stopped speaking about the case publicly altogether until the case concluded to preserve the integrity of the legal proceedings. This isn't true. Yeah, Omnia completely disappeared from their public Twitter account for a really long while, but that doesn't mean they weren't specifically referencing the case, referencing me, or even alluding to it. Here's a tweet about about how the world rewards authenticity where you try to relate to Megan the Stallion's trauma when you're not anywhere close to the type of person she is, nor are you the victim you want the internet to believe you are. Here's you going on a rant about hopeless peaches because for some reason you were keeping such close tabs on them that you saw us have an argument on Twitter and they bought the situation up. This was in July. I thought you stopped talking about this in March. Here's your alt account, Jungkook's left cheek, as well as your other one, can you not? Discussing matters of the case in the YouTube comment section because you knew if you went against your word, you would look disingenuous. Surprisingly, you completely ignore the fact that I exposed you for this in my own video. Here's the clip. You don't ever think for a second how you can be insensitive, uneducated, incapable of doing anything wrong, that instead of just taking the L, you would much rather talk shit on alt accounts and start blaming the same community who banded together to give you the voice you have today of being the stupid ones. And instead of being honest and fucking forthcoming, you do an entire live stream talking shit, but suddenly don't want anyone to make any third party content on it unless you had a hand in it. Isn't that fucking strange. I watched every video Omnia made and nowhere does she play the clip where I said this. Wonder why. Kai, on the other hand, did not. Kai has made tens of videos, hundreds of claims, and probably upwards of a thousand tweets in the span of the entire case. I have an entire Google Drive's worth of incriminating behavior from him and I only have this because, well, we were in a criminal case and, and that that's what you do. You collect evidence. Ignoring the fact that Omni is speaking to their audience like they wouldn't know you collect evidence in a criminal case as if they're stupid, I like to address the contents of this clip. For one, for somebody who supposedly does not keep up with me, your words, not mine, I find it really interesting now that it's collecting evidence for a criminal case and not stalking. Did you forget when you said this? The most frustrating part about the situation is that at first, I had an abuser in close physical proximity to me who had free reign to emotionally, verbally, financially, and physically abuse slash berate me. Now that he's not allowed within 250 feet of me, I have a stalker on my hands. I block him on every social media I'm active on, Twitter slash Instagram, ban him from engaging with my Twitch chat. I've never done this, by the way. Changed my phone number, changed my Apple ID email, changed all my passwords, attended all the hearings to extend the protective order and ensure that it's still in place. Yet here I am, still dealing with him watching my videos, lurking my streams, making threads every time I say anything about anything on social media, can't even make an Amazon wishlist without an entire thread being made full of complaining. Please just leave me alone. You're obsessed. Here's Omnia complaining about me releasing a video. 
Here's Omnia complaining about what I said in that specific video. Here's Omnia creating a thread replying to someone about what I said in my video. So it's normal when Omnia does it, but obsession when it's me. If I clip your stream, which I've never done, I've only taken a singular screenshot to prove a point, I'm obsessed in a stalker, but when you download all my videos, some of them I don't even have copies of, clip my streams and screenshot my tweets, storing them all in a Google Drive, it's you collecting evidence for a criminal case. When you say anything about anything on social media, you get a thread. But you know what I get? Legal action. Luckily, the judge denied the revision to the protective order, which they blatantly failed to address this entire video series. But it just goes to show that Omnia does not allow anyone the same courtesy they allow themselves, literally ever. So what am I supposed to do? Not fight back? Do these rules suddenly not apply to you? Does this behavior not indicate stalking and obsession on your part by your own logic? Your abuser is anything like mine, they're probably stupid enough to go on Twitter rant after Twitter rant, create videos stating that they slapped you three times, but that it was self-defense. The only time that I ever put my hands on Hana was after I slapped them three times. I will be completely honest about that. I slapped Hana three times. I didn't punch them or anything like that. I slapped Hana three times in self-defense. I slapped them once, they didn't stop. I slapped them again, they didn't stop, and I slapped them one last time, and they stopped. Then retracted it all, only to say that they never did it. No, I did not abuse Hana. I'm surprised you put a caption here asking, stop what exactly? As if I didn't explain exactly why in that video. But you cut out the context because what I said beforehand is incredibly incriminating on your end. Otherwise, you would have kept it in. That video is two hours long, and you can find the full copy on Cringe's YouTube channel. And you downloaded this video, so how do you not know the context? of what was said. Also, if you want people to take your trauma so seriously, maybe don't put meme music in the background while I'm speaking. Omnia does this often whenever I speak, and it takes away a lot from the content. You can tell that they're trying too hard to get a rise out of me, and it's just not working. It's really just childish, but that's surprising no one coming from Omnia. Here's the full clip, but before I play that, I want to bring attention to what was said here in the description, which no one read. Please be respectful of me and my story. Please do ask permission to make third-party content on this, as I do not consent to content being made otherwise. I deserve to be centered in any coverage of said story slash trauma. Thank you for your understanding. For one, this isn't just your story and goes to show how controlling Omnia is. Omnia wants to believe that everything must go through them and no one should listen to me despite me being just as active, if not more active, than they have ever been in regards to these proceedings. I also have a side. I also have a story. So why is it that Omnia Omnia is the only one allowed to speak on it. Why are they the only one centered? They had no issue with people making third-party content on the matter when everyone was in blind support of them, but now that the support is not so blind, everything has changed. My has been deleted and I've been locked out of my account. Um, on there, I've just been posting a lot about my situation and why my channel was deleted and just that. There's a lot of specifics and I just don't care to go into that right now. There's been a million videos about it already. But what should people do, Omnia? Is this statement no longer valid because it was a year ago? And if that's the case, why is this since deleted video being used against me? Wouldn't be fair if I held your dolly guts or hopeless peaches videos against you. Funny how you're the only one who is allowed to delete content you no longer agree with, but I can't. The reason I deleted this video is because hopeless peaches made an entire live tweet thread reacting to me recounting my trauma. While I'm offended by this thread to this day, it's no longer public, so it's not doing any more damage. Also, I just don't care. I've moved on. Either way, the existence of it made me retry my approach, and I ended up with my 45-minute video recovering the situation, which people were more open to. Regardless, here's the full clip of what I said in my video. Anna was telling me things like, kill me, kill me, hit me, and the only reason that they were pinned down on the floor was because was so they no longer touch me i was also afraid for my own safety within that situation and i had no idea what hana was going to do further within it i never punched hana i never punched her in the face i never held them down and just sat there and beat on them like i'm some sort of fucking monster there was a danger within that situation, not only toward me, but also themselves toward themselves. And the thing that pains me the most about this 
is that this entire situation is being looked at as if I'm just sitting here waking up every day and hitting my partner. Anytime that Hana has been held down was protect me from them hitting me. And the only time that I ever put my hands on Hana was after I slapped them three times. I will be completely honest about that. I slapped Hana three times. I didn't punch them or anything like that. Once they were on the floor and this entire situation was getting to the peak of like conflict and I was receiving this onslaught of verbal, physical, and emotional abuse all in once within that situation, I slapped Hana three times in self-defense. I slapped them once, they didn't stop. I slapped them again, they didn't stop. And I slapped them one last time and they stopped. After that, I never put a hand on Hana. I will, not, I will not sit here and act like this was a situation where I'm just like beating on Hana and I'm just mad and I'm doing all this because I'm fucking upset. No, I'm doing this to protect myself. As you can see, there's more to the story that meets the eye. I actually decided to scrap that video and revise it with the one that I stitched to the first part of this entire series, but I don't mind uploading it again if that's something people want from me. Also, Anya is right. I didn't stop speaking about the case, and why would I after you got a court order to attempt to shut me up on social media, accuse me of eight crimes, two being felonies, and also abuse the system to take my cat, on top of lying about the events of our relationship, as well as December 3rd? Makes no sense. Another thing I want to address is this specific Let's just begin where it all started. The end. Besides the tweet I made announcing the conclusion to my court case, I didn't really say much else about quite literally anything until, well, Kai decided to drop a 50-minute long video titled, My Court Case Is Over, Let's Talk About Amia and Kai Weiss. You know, call me an asshole, but I think it says something about how disproportionately skewed this case has been historically as well as in the present, when all I had to do was type an odd, uh, 280 characters on Twitter.com for Kai to then feel obligated to drop this gargantuan-ass video less than 24 hours later. But truthfully, that's neither here nor there. I'm just being a petty little bitch. <laughs> Again, this is Omnia antagonizing me about something that they actively do themselves and ignoring the nuance of everything. I also had not spoken about the case since November of 2022, mainly because I was court ordered to, but I already made the decision on November 14th. I actually uploaded a video shortly before that titled Some Bottled Up Feelings About Everything. I'm frankly embarrassed by this video, but it was archived by Septi Paws, so if you want to watch it, you can. Omnia is undermining the reason I decided to upload. I don't have four thousand nor twenty thousand followers like you and Thuman do. Thuman being the one who retweeted their tweet. This is something that narcissists do. They treat their actions like they're not a big deal as if the interactions and narrative attached to their actions don't have an adverse effect on someone else. It wasn't you just writing 280 characters. That same tweet has 28.2 thousand impressions. Just as you felt the need to come forward and make a video to quote debunk and not allow me to say what I want about the case in its conclusion. Why is it that I can't do the same with you. You're all going to notice that this is a pattern with Omnia. This was also a problem when I dated them. Omnia is allowed to get angry and speak about whatever they please on their terms, but the problem is they expect everyone else to also follow those terms. They set standards for everyone else that they don't follow themselves. You can't screenshot my tweets. You're a stalker, but they can screenshot yours. You can't drop a 50 minute video on me. That's disproportionate, but they can drop a three hour video series on you. Omnia has wanted this from the very beginning for me to not defend myself or expose them for anything ever because it ruins the public persona they so intricately crafted for their audience. Omnia also keeps bringing up this plea agreement, but leaves out the fact that I had two completely different plea agreements before prosecution settled on the one I accepted. And if the case was so strong, why not give me the agreement you created before and take it to trial. They go on to post the calls they had with prosecution in regards to it. I'm going to play the clips and just respond after. Will be sentenced to six months in jail. That's pretty much the extent of the plea agreement. However, Kai came out of the gate on April 21st with a bunch of bullshit about this plea agreement. And that's why I sought out to set the record straight with my attorney through these phone calls. 
Now, I need to make one thing abundantly clear, so tune in especially right here. My attorney throughout this entire case, and the one whose voice you will be hearing on these phone calls, was not the prosecuting attorney on April 20th. You may be surprised to hear that I never spoke a day in my life with the attorney who was prosecuting the case on April 20th. He was not my lawyer, he was not my attorney, he was simply the lawyer appointed with handling the cases from the Commonwealth's attorney office on April 20th. But I don't know him, nor have I ever spoken to him before. Here's a clip from the first phone call with my attorney explaining just that. you Hannah I'm doing as good as I can be <laughs> uh, did you just recently speak to I did I wanted to ask before like we talk about it if it's okay for me to record this call just in case because of what Kai is alleging publicly Th that's perfectly fine the most important thing that I don't know if because I don't know the timing of when the last time we talked to she came to me after she spoke to you and expressed your concerns. I don't know if you're aware, I wasn't even in the courtroom that day. Oh, no, I'm not aware of that. I, What Kai is alleging publicly is that you said in court that my case wasn't credible enough for it to go to trial and that's why we ended up getting the plea deal which is not what I understood it to be. What I understood it to be was that we took the plea deal for efficiency sake rather than like fairness or justice because the case was going on for a really long time and we would have had the case tossed out if we didn't get it done as quick as possible and so we had to reach a plea deal. So first you claim that you were relieved about the decision then you claim you weren't consulted about this on Twitter yet somehow you knew that a plea agreement needed to be reached for efficiency's sake as opposed to justice? Why didn't you care about justice and accept this outcome? Why are you more than happy with this? Your words, not mine. From my understanding, the case would have never gotten thrown out and went to trial if I didn't accept the plea agreement. So you mean to tell me this entire time, if I didn't accept every plea bargain given to me, that every one of my charges would have been dismissed and the case would have been thrown out? Why would they throw out the case if it's so strong? There are cases that have gone on for longer. Why would they change the plea agreement if they were certain I would be convicted on every charge? If you were certain I would be convicted on every charge. So you knew that this was coming and you must have known the details of the agreement, which is why you never showed up to court, which also goes to explain why you were so quick to go on Twitter and tweet about it, but I'm speculating. That's my understanding, but you can tell me if I'm wrong. Well, I, I think that's close enough, at, at least at this point. Uh, oftentimes we send one person to court on guilty plea days because they run, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 cases a day. Right. And it's more efficient for our office to have one attorney up there handling all the cases rather than, you know, all of you four guys. to six attorneys yeah. going back and forth. So the cases that day were handled by... Okay. Now, I had certainly talked to him about the case, but I was not the person in the courtroom, so I can't honestly tell you what, if anything, was said because I wasn't there. So why are we taking this man's words about what happened in the courtroom at all? He's right. He wasn't there and neither was Amia. Interesting. Well, he posted two videos that were like an hour long each and started watching them like because I just called her maybe like three minutes ago. And she started watching them and she was like, oh, you need to call for legal aid because something needs to be done about this because he's like lying about the case publicly and like posting it on social media and claiming like you as my prosecutor said things that you didn't say because you if you're saying that you weren't even there in the courtroom, then how is it that you said that? <laughs> I did not say that. I certainly did not say that in court because I wasn't in court that day. Uh, like I said, handled the case, and, and I don't know what, if anything, he did say. Okay, so then do you think I should call him? Well, I'm going to, he's in a meeting right now, so I'm going to talk with him to ask, you know, what, if anything, was said, and then we will get that information to you. Okay, cool. 
I never claimed that this specific prosecutor said anything, and both Omnia, Victims Protection, and this prosecutor should know that. I didn't even name them when I spoke in my video. If he never showed up, you should know that I'm not referring to him. So I don't know why you attributed my statements to him. I'm not lying about anyone. Obviously, I'm talking about the prosecutor who showed up to represent you on that day. The prosecutor Omnia is talking to is Mr. Wilder. He was there during the majority of the case, but was absent on the day I received my plea agreement. The fact he has to go to the actual person who showed up is telling of his credibility here too. Why the fuck is this old ass victim's aid lady watching my YouTube videos? Where is she getting the links from? I wonder who. And surprisingly, nothing was done about my videos to this day, so I guess the whole shutting me up on social media thing isn't working again. But since everyone is so curious about what was said in the courtroom, here's the court recording of prosecution explaining their reasoning as to why we reached this plea agreement, as well as the judge hearing this and explaining the events of another two-day case they witnessed, which they felt was related to mine. Good morning to you, Mr. Good morning, Judge. And Mr. Mia is here on behalf of the Commonwealth. And we are here today for a plea, and I've been handed a plea agreement, so I'm going to take just a moment to review it. Reading paragraph three, it says, Upon acceptance of the plea of guilty to the charge, the Commonwealth would move to, and the sentence doesn't end, it begins, the parties agree. Is that agree to null cross the remaining charges? It's repeated again in, in paragraph number four. Uh, oh. Mr. Wilder essentially just stuttered when he was typing, I believe. Thank you. So, Mr. Could you please proffer the facts of the case and why you entered into a plea agreement in this case? Yes, ma'am. December 8th, 2021, the named victim in this case came to the police department and said five days earlier her ex boyfriend, the defendant, had assaulted her. She said he punched her, choked her, and took her phone from her. She said, I don't want him charged, I just want a protective order. A protective order was obtained. Later that same day after she left, she came back and said uh, when he came back to the property to get his belongings, she realized he had stolen some of her property and she had changed her mind and did want to charge for the December 3rd incident. So the reason for the agreement is uh, Mr. Wilder in discussions with Ms had some instances where she may not have been truthful with him. Those were all disclosed and turned over. It likely would have been information that could have been used to cross-examine her in front of the jury. The defendant has no prior convictions. It does document the domestic assault. I would say, and the victim is not supportive of this. She, she does not agree with this result. She's been consulted. It's an exercise of our discretion and the likelihood of what would happen in front of the jury that we're um, entering into this agreement. It does document the domestic assault. It's obviously, if what she said happened, extremely serious, but it's sort of just one of those tough cases. This is the best call we could make as an office about what a just result is. But again, um, she, she is not supportive of this, but we're not sure. Well, we have an idea of what would happen in front of the jury. And this just seems a fair resolution from the and for the record, it does sound as if, based upon potential grading material, that there would be a, um, some, a number of credibility issues. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to accept the agreement, but is there anything that you wish to add for the record? It, it's redundant, but I'll add that um, in addition to what Mr. Crawford, I believe Mr. Wilder uh, advised me that there's a, a related, there was a related civil protective order matter that got appealed to this court. Ms. Sulan, I believe, testified during that matter, and her uh, testimony led to credibility questions with the Commonwealth. Mr. White, what is going to happen now is I'm going to have the court read the indictment just to the assault and battery, ask you how you plead, and I'm going to follow up with a series of questions. Okay. I do want to state for the record, since the victim does not agree with the plea agreement, that I tried a two-day case earlier this week where the defendant, at close range, shot someone twice in the side of the stump. And there was a sort of a, there was a question about who did what to who. The victim did have some scratches on his neck. He was alleging that the person was trying to choke him and 
was, didn't know he had a knife or what was going on. The victim was saying, no, I didn't have anything, and I just maybe had scratched him while I was trying to protect himself. The jury found the defendant not guilty. So I am not ignoring the victim's concerns, but I, like you, are aware that when these matters are presented to a jury, they have a much different perspective being um, people that are objective. Thank you, Your Honor. Next, I want to go over the claims being made in the second call in regards to the Alfred plea and my conviction being on my record. I'm just going to play the clip that Omni put in their video. Which is it, Kai? Are you committing an act of perjury? Or are you just lying about how you did not assault me to save face online? Either way you slice it, you're lying. This also isn't substantiated in court despite him claiming he said as much. The plea agreement would never go through if Kai told the prosecution that he's quote-unquote willing to plead guilty to a crime he never committed in order to alleviate the burden the case has on his family. They simply wouldn't accept the agreement. Additionally, Kai is acting as if he is able to maintain his innocence for a crime he pled guilty to, which is not how the court of law works. This is also stated by Maxine, who is self-reportedly Kai's friend in real life. Maxine stated that the plea agreement that Kai took was an Alfred plea deal in a Twitter thread with a friend of mine named Miniweeds. Here is a screenshot corroborating that. Miniweeds says, quote, You're missing a very large point here. If there was no evidence, there would be no charge and no need for a plea deal. There was evidence. That's why there was a plea deal. Your friend is an abuser, brother. Maxine says, Babes, you're the one missing a big detail. Kai took an Alfred plea. Do you know what that is? Miniweeds said, Oh my god, it was an Alfred? I'm so done, LMA. Yo, you just made it so much worse. Maxine replied, how? Kai literally said he didn't want to go to trial, but that he was innocent. He explained his reasoning. So, of course he took an Alfred plea? For one, shout out Maxine. Love you, babes. For two, here's the court recording of the judge taking my testimony as an Alfred plea. Before I play that, Anya also claims that I intelligently and voluntarily admitted to the charge. In reality, I was just trusting my lawyer's judgment and going along with the plea of guilty because at the time, I had no idea what an Alfred plea was, and I had no idea it was good for me as opposed to anything else. I thought that if I took the Alfred plea, it would ruin the agreement, but I specifically remembered the judge saying that they would take it as one, and since I didn't come home with a sentencing document, based on my memory, I believe that's what I received. I unfortunately did opt to plead guilty, but I absolutely did state my case in regards to my family, and the judge was absolutely willing to take it as an Alfred plea, given I had no criminal record and no experience with legal proceedings before this. And judging by the statement my lawyer made, I assumed I was making the right decision to plead guilty despite my feelings about it. So now the clerk is going to read the indictment and ask you to please. Could you please say The grand jurors for the city of June, June term of 2022 returned an indictment against you charging that on or about December 8th, 2021 you did unlawfully violate a protective order issued for some to Oh, I'm sorry. It should be the assault battery. Okay. The grand jurors June term of 2022 entered an indictment against you stating that on or about December 3rd, 2021, you did unlawfully assault and batter a family member or a household member in violation of Virginia. Guilty. Can you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the whole truth, so help me God? I swear. Mr. White, I'm going to ask you a series of questions before I find you guilty, just to make sure that you understand what you're charged with and the consequences of your plea. If you do not understand the question that I ask you, let me know, and I'm glad to rephrase it. Or you can stop any time, and we will let you speak privately with Mr. B. Okay? Okay. So can you please state your full name for the court? Can you please spell your first name for the record? What is your date of birth? July 19, 2000. That makes you how old today? 22. And what is the highest level of education you've completed? Senior year of high school. So I take it you can read my English language? Yes, very well. Are you the person charged in the misdemeanor indictment with assault and battery on family? Yes, I am. Do you fully understand the charge against you? Yes, I do. Have you discussed this charge with Mr. Yes, thoroughly. Good. And do you understand there are certain elements the Commonwealth is required to prove beyond a reasonable doubt before you could be convicted? Yes. Have you discussed with Mr. Whether, uh, whether you should plead guilty or not guilty? Yes. 
did you have an opportunity to talk to him about any and all possible defenses? Yes. And then after that, did you make the decision for yourself that you should be guilty to this indictment? I want to kind of, you know, put a bit of detail as to why I made this decision. But while I personally don't, you know, I have the same feelings as, I have feelings just like uh, Miss also has feelings about what went on that day. But I feel like for myself and for my family and for, you know, everyone who supported me, as well as my mother who passed away recently, I think that pleading guilty is the best possible decision to make in this situation. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Does counsel mind if I inquire as to maybe this is an Alfred plea? Hi, uh, coming in here, it's me, Etta and Kai. I've been working on this video for the past week, so obviously I sound very tired. Uh, it's the morning of July 7th. Yesterday was my brother's birthday <laughs> and everything. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to get this video done as soon as possible. Hopefully I'll have it done by Saturday or by the end of the day today. Um, I'm already 30 minutes into a nearly two hour video. So, uh, wish me luck y'all if you made it this far. Um, I just want to come in here and say that at this point in the recording, I talked to my lawyer and he let me know that he didn't tell me specifically what an Alfred plea was. He just let me know that even though you're pleading guilty here, um, you're not pleading guilty to any of the other charges. And the assault and battery doesn't necessarily relate to all of the other charges as well. Um, he actually speaks for me later on in this recording and explains to the judge um, my perspective for me because I didn't necessarily understand what an Alfred plea was. So uh, what you're going to hear after the fact is um, my judge, not my judge, my lawyer, explain what my perspective is. And you're also going to hear me not really be sure what to respond in regards to the judge asking me, are you doing this because you're guilty? Like I said, um, I don't think that I'm guilty of the assault and battery charge. And on top of that, initially, I wasn't even charged with assault and battery. I was simply charged with simple assault. So the charge was changed in order to get this plea deal and the charge was changed for the plea deal rather. So um, it just goes to show that, you know, there's a lot more nuance than Omni is trying to paint it out to be. It's not, and as you can see from the context of the rest of the recording, that it's not simply just, you know, me going up in there saying that I assaulted and battered her or anything like that. It's just, there's so much in this court case that, if Omnia actually showed up, they wouldn't have to call people or speculate or try and get the court recording for themselves. And this is what I mean by Omnia not being responsible enough to show up to court for the court case that they love to sit here and say, oh, it lasted 16 months on social media or 15 months on social media. So Omnia is full of shit, obviously. <laughs> um, it, I'm, I'm sorry it's taking me quite some time in order for me to show y'all that but this video is really really fucking hefty and literally my entire week has been going toward making it the best video it can possibly be so if you made it here uh thanks and <laughs> maybe subscribe i don't fucking know bro <laughs> this is too much stress in this word awesome thank you Jack. thank you mr white i'm going to treat this as an alpha plea when we get to the issue of whether the plea is an alpha plea or not, I'm going to preface my question by saying, please listen carefully to my next question. Right. So are you pleading guilty freely and voluntarily? Yes. Please listen carefully to my next question. Right. Are you pleading guilty because you are in fact guilty of the crime charge? Yes. Or no. <laughs> I'm going to ask my question again. Right. Are you pleading guilty because you are in fact guilty of the crime charged? J Judge, um, if I can just interject, I, I believe that uh, 
that Mr. White is acknowledging that he did commit a domestic assault and battery. There were other charges that were much more significant. Yeah. Um, but he, he is acknowledging that he uh, committed an, an act of a, a rude or angry touching against a family or household member. My apologies for the confusion. Okay. So the court is not going to find its main pursuit to North Carolina versus Alfred. As you can see, there was even a moment I wasn't quite sure what to respond, which is when I talked to my lawyer and he spoke for me. Either way, regardless of if I knew of an Alfred plea or not, I was going to go into the courtroom to bleed guilty despite knowing I'm not an abuser, and I wouldn't go on to complain about committing acts of perjury when you made your lawyer commit one on behalf of you during the trial to get back Gabby. But we'll get to Gabby in a little bit. This is what I mean by no matter what I do, I'm still wrong. For someone who cries so much about uncharitable interpretations, why are you vilifying me for literally throwing you a bone that you have been using against me since the case ended. I didn't have to plead guilty, and judging from your talk with your prosecutor, if I didn't, the process would have gone much longer and the case would have been thrown out. So what would you rather I do? Not plead guilty and the case later get thrown out, or plead guilty and commit perjury by your logic? Either way, I still lose in your eyes, and you'll find a way to make it a problem regardless. Last clip I'm going to go over is this next call. I have to cover multiple videos, so forgive me for not dissecting all three hours of Omnia's content. A lot of it is just filler or Omnia spending entirely too much time explaining things they don't understand or making some shitty edit because they're mad. Now, if you don't know what an Alfred plea deal is, my attorney explained it very aptly as well as clearly, but my attorney also debunked this lie as well. Here's that part of the second phone call with my attorney after he had spoken to the prosecuting attorney. He also wanted to make it very, very clear, and this is why I'm glad you called, that at at one point, the hearing seemed to be shifting a little bit towards what's called an Alford plea. And what that is, is in criminal law, you can plead guilty or you can plead not guilty, but you can also plead under what's called an Alford plea. And that's named after the famous case, the guy's name was Alford, in which case you plead not guilty, but you admit that it had it gone to trial, the Commonwealth's evidence could have been found to be beyond a reasonable doubt to convict you. Right. It, it's a face-saving measure for some defendants. They just can't bring themselves to say, yeah, I did it. You know, I'm pleading guilty because I did it. So they have to say, no, I didn't do it, but, you know, they got the goods on me and I don't want to take the risk of a trial. So it looked like, according to Mr. that the case was starting to veer in that direction. But at that point, stood up and he told the court, no, I did it. I assaulted him. Do I consider this an act of perjury or what? I'm just joking. It's literally a misunderstanding on the prosecutor's part. And how could he understand when he wasn't there? I did not stand up and say, I assaulted her. Like, what? Well, he's right that the case started veering toward an Alfred plea. Regardless of if I got one or not, I was going to plead guilty. He's framing it like it was some grand gesture of admittance when it was hardly that. So he stood in open court and admitted on the record that he had committed an assault on you that day. So it wasn't an Alfred plea. It was not an Alfred plea. He just straight up stood up and told the judge, yes, I committed an assault on her. And that's now a matter of public record. Okay, that's something I wasn't sure about because someone on social media who is in connection with him said that it was an Alfred plea, but I wasn't sure and I wanted to ask if that was the case. But No, Mr. was absolutely crystal clear with me that it started looking like it might go that way, but stood up and said, no, I committed an assault and battery. Okay. So it was not an Alfred plea. So that was a blatant lie on Maxine's part. I guess birds of a feather flock together if liars were birds. <laughs> Take note of the birds of a feather comment. We'll get back to that later. And Maxine was just speaking on my behalf based on their understanding. And that's what we both understood at the time. Either way, I still would have ended up with a guilty plea regardless. Maxine also made this point while she was arguing with your friend and and I wish people would read that entire thread other than the snippet because both you, your friend, and the rest of the people in your Discord group are all equally stupid. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Though I think it's really funny that Kai said, I would hardly call it admittance. But then just stood up and said, no, I committed an assault and battery. I would hardly call it admittance. He just straight up stood up and told the judge, yes, I committed an assault on her. And that's now a matter of public record. I would hardly call it admittance. So he stood in open court and admitted on the record that he had committed an assault on you that day.
but it was purportedly hardly an admittance, according to Kai. The fact of the matter is, Kai cannot claim or maintain his innocence publicly regarding the domestic assault and battery, considering he did not plead guilty pursuant to Alfred. He simply pled guilty, which is corroborated by both the plea agreement and the subsequent sentencing order that was placed. Additionally, the prosecuting attorney was abundantly clear in communicating with my attorney that Kai stood in open court and pled, on public record, to committing an assault and battery. So, on all accounts, Kai assaulted and battered me in my apartment on December 3rd, 2021, which is exactly what I've been claiming since the day it happened to me. He knows this, I know this, and the courts know this to be true. That's why he has been convicted for such, and there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's not an allegation, it's what objectively happened. Kai Weiss is a certifiably convicted domestic abuser and batterer. You don't have to use allegedly anymore, he just is one. But Kai insisted that it wasn't that big of a deal, since it is a single misdemeanor after all. And besides, according to him, he could just get it erased from his record in like, ballpark maybe a couple years or something? No kidding, he mentioned vaguely that the charge could just hocus pocus, abracadabra, be absolved in some random time frame. 2. The charge has been lessened to a misdemeanor, otherwise my record is clean, so when it comes to looking for jobs, there's no real issue. I also consulted my lawyer about this. Some may deny me, but overall, I'm pretty fine. I decided it's a great compromise as opposed to going to trial, which is a very expensive process, and it's way better than what Omnia wanted me to take. Also, to add, I can get the charge expunged from my record, and it automatically expunges after a couple of years, so I didn't really think it was a big deal. But again, that's not true. Here's me asking my lawyer about it. Kai's also alleging that the domestic assault and battery misdemeanor charge is going to be expunged from his record eventually? Absolutely not. That's not true? It's not true. So it will stay on his record? It will stay on his record permanently. Okay. That, that was that was a big part of the whole point of it. So it's staying on his record? Yes. He just has a flat out conviction. You can't expunge convictions. Okay. So he's just been lying then. <laughs> Or mistaken, I don't know. Okay. A lot of people don't understand these kinds of things, but no. He just has a flat-out conviction. There was nothing in the agreement about agreeing to expunge anything, and the law wouldn't allow it in any event. Damn. Is anything Kai say in this video founded in reality? Yes. You just didn't respond to it. <laughs> How are you going to make this claim when you didn't even cover half of the content in the video? It's 50 minutes, Omnia. Just everything founded in reality. You chose to blatantly ignore because it makes you look bad. Oh my god, they're so stupid. But you know what? I will concede here. I was wrong about my charge being expunged from my record. I was mistaken about that, and I apologize. It's crazy because even your prosecutor wasn't going to call it a flat-out lie either. Even he was willing to accept that reality because even he knows I haven't been through this much law before, and neither have you, which is why you're calling him. And either way, I was going to plead guilty regardless. Alfred or not, man, I just wanted to be done with it. But again, this person is crying about uncharitable interpretations? Give me a break. Kai goes on to explain his third reasoning as to why he took the plea deal offered to him. Three. The sentence was completely suspended, meaning I spend no time in jail whatsoever. So despite the charge being on my record, I'm a free NB. And that's all I wanted. I can do whatever I want now. Yeah, okay, Kai can do whatever he wants, except violate my protective order again, or else he'll be subject to six months in jail according to that same suspended sentence he's referring to. Who gives a fuck? Oh my god, every time I listen to this, I lose my fucking mind. <laughs> I've gotten employed, moved out my old house, and lived my life normally since you charged me with this nonsense in November over some shit I didn't even do, and yet somehow you still feel the need to say this. I am free. Cry about it. Oh my god, please get some business. I'm begging you. Also, Omnia put this in their video when I was literally quoting the prosecutor's words at the beginning of it. Agreement is in discussions with had some instances where she may not have been truthful with him. Those were all disclosed and turned over to it likely would have been information that could have been used to cross-examine her in front of a jury. Oh my god, you stupid ass bitch. This is a quote. Let me play it for you. The named victim in this case came to the apartment and said five days earlier her ex-boyfriend the defendant had assaulted her. She said he punched her, choked her, and took her phone from her. She said, I don't want him charged, I just want a protective order. 
a protective order was obtained. Later that same day after she left, she came back and said, uh, when he came back to the property to get his belongings, she realized he had stolen some of her property and she had changed her mind and did want to charge for the December 3rd incident. So the reason for the agreement is uh, Mr. Wilder in discussion with Ms. had some instances where she may not have been truthful with him. Those were all disclosed and turned over. It likely would have been information that could have been used to cross-examine her in front of the jury. I did not say this. The prosecutor who represented you did. And you've been misgendered by everyone in that courtroom and didn't argue with anyone for doing so while you were in court. So why are you doing it online? You didn't tell the judge they misgendered you when you tried silencing me online. You didn't tell prosecution to stop misgendering you. Stop weaponizing your pronouns when it's convenient for you and take your own advice to keep that same energy. Not only that, but my preferred pronouns are they them. But you have no issue consistently referring to me as your ex-boyfriend now despite calling me your ex-partner when the situation popped off and my pronouns were he they beforehand it's almost like accusing me of misgendering you maliciously was just projection on your part because suddenly you forgot about my preferred pronouns which you should know better than anyone as someone i used to date omnia is a hypocrite but is anyone surprised anyways that's all the major points i felt like i needed to cover in part one onward to part two Nah, nigga. Nah, nigga. I'm back. I'm back in this bitch. There's more information. There's more information since Omni wants to go on and on about, oh, you misgendered me. Did you forget in your Discord server when Gay Jesus put in the day 12 entry? And since birds of a feather flock together, Hana, let's, let's read what they had to say. I still cannot fathom why Hana would do this to me, sending me, a young black man, Fuck, I forgot I'm supposed to be non-binary. So much for Black Alliance. I couldn't give 10,000 shits if they are black. They still reported me for what? Hana is not black. Writing a love letter? Stomps foot on ground and cries like a baby. Forgive me for being so emotional. I just miss my life outside of these bars that hold me hostage, no longer able to fly freely. I miss me, so, uh, not me, uh, actually, Maxine, standing by me no matter what, Hana pulled out their ass. I miss Twitter, my home, my life. It shaped my entire personality and I was always in the right because I'm a black man, uh, no, not man, NB, fuck. <laughs> I just wish the best for Hana, aka getting me out of here, running back into my arms, begging for forgiveness, cutting off all her, I mean, there. I cannot misgender them on purpose or else I'm transphobic, according to their fans. Ugh. Stands and saying I did nothing wrong. I miss you, Hana. Glad that your channel was deleted. Kai Weiss. Mwah. Bitch. <laughs> Y'all really must feel so fucking stupid now that I'm not in jail. Y'all went through this entire fucking fan fiction only for it to not become a reality. <laughs> I don't give a fuck who Han is dating, bro. Please, let them fall into somebody else's arms. Keep that bitch far away from me. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. But we want to cry about being misgendered. But this guy, this guy doesn't respect my pronouns. Right? Right? Birds of a feather, though. Eat my fucking ass. The next video in the series, Omnia covers the protective order and the cats. And I just want to read this tweet before I go over anything. This is Omnia's tweet, by the way. Their words. This is my last tweet for the day because this is extra ridiculous. Consider the fact that maybe when someone doesn't have proof of any of their claims, it's because it never happened. The agreement that I'm okay with rescinding gifts doesn't exist because I never agreed to that. I'll get to the gift part later, but remember y'all, when someone has no proof of their claims, they didn't happen. Keep this in mind. One of the clips I want to go over is this one, where Omnia argues in incredibly arbitrary detail, but says something of note that for someone who has every single one of my videos on them downloaded, I'm surprised they haven't went. Kai was forced to leave my apartment. And before anyone asks, well, whose apartment was it? It was mine. And it has always been mine. Here is the apartment lease where it says, among this lease made by, insert the name of my leasing office, here and after called owner and insert my legal name, here and after called tenant, owner agrees to lease the tenant the following described property, insert my address, apartment number seven, to be used as a private dwelling only by the above named persons named as tenant, blah, 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 blah. Signed by me on December 1st, 2021, which was a mere two days before Kai assaulted me and a week before I ran to the police to obtain my emergency protective order. Editing Omnia here, I'm realizing that this part might be a little confusing for certain viewers, so I'll dedicate a little moment to explain it. The 
lease I'm showing you on screen now is a renewal lease. So I've been in this apartment for two years. My first lease began on July 2021 and lasted until July 2022. My second lease, which is the one I'm showing you on screen and the one that is still currently active, began on July 2022 and lasts until July 2023. I told my leasing office that I would like to renew my lease for one additional year on December 1st, 2021. So that's what this is. And yes, if you're curious, I'm still living in the same apartment I was abused in. Whoop whoop. Not for much longer though. Okay, back to the video. Over. One thing that Omnia fails to consider is that in order to get a protective order, you need to have lived with this person to even get the protective order. Unfortunately for me, none of the officers who gave the order confirmed with the leasing office if my name was on the lease. Because if our property manager found out that Hana was supposedly housing another person and that other person was not on the lease, they would be penalized for it. How do I know this? Because I was the one who turned in our rent every month to the leasing office. So they got to know me very well. On top of that, I never claimed I owned the apartment, but for someone who claims Gabriella is just as much of their cat as Minnie is mine, I'm surprised this didn't apply for the apartment as well. I wasn't on the lease, but I paid bills just as much as Hana did, which I've already covered in a past video, but Hana is still claiming that the only asset I covered was our phone bill, despite me being the one who provided them with the extra hundred dollars to cover for rent because they didn't have enough money two days before they were allegedly abused so why would i do that here is me literally reminding hana to send me a request for the electric bill here is hana asking about what our leasing lady said when i went to give them the check for rent why would the leasing lady accept me giving it to them at all if they didn't consider me a valid member of the household also I thought the abuse was throughout the entirety of the relationship. So what do you mean if you knew you would be abused two days later? You asked me to be on the lease before you even renewed it and I declined, which I'm glad I did because if I didn't, I would be liable for paying rent even when I didn't live at the apartment due to the protective order. But it gets better. I blurred all parts of my legal name out for obvious reasons, except for the first two letters of my last name to make this point. My last name starts with the letters SU, and I think it's pretty common knowledge at this point that Kai's last name is White. He's been more than public about that fact, I'm not doxing anything that he hasn't already been vocal about. Therefore, I think that's proof enough without doxing myself to indicate I own the apartment and was the only one whose name was on the lease for it. Additionally, the fact that I even have the apartment lease in my personal records should indicate to you that I am the legal owner of the property. Kai cannot pull up this same lease for the life of him because he never received the lease nor signed onto it. Again, man, I've never claimed that I was on the lease. <laughs> I didn't even want to be on it. I'd love to see a clip where I claim this because it's nowhere in this video. I helped make the apartment half of what it is today. I set up the TV stand with Hana. I put up the plants that are hanging above the living room couch. I helped with every aspect of putting that apartment and their previous apartment together. We literally brainstormed the setup for the place together. If Amia did not want me to consider this my home as well, I would not have done all I did for that space on top of paying bills. And saying I even have to say this. People also tend to forget that I was the one, and continues to be the one, who paid rent in that apartment. I paid for, and continue to pay for, all the utilities including water, sewer, and trash pickup, internet, and electricity in the house. I essentially paid every bill except for our phone bill, which was the one responsibility Kai agreed to take on during our relationship. And that isn't even a bill that relates to the upkeep of the residence or the property. But I digress. This is just a flat out why. Like I said, I also help pay rent. I also paid the electric bill and I also paid for the internet and groceries. The utilities, which is just water, was included in the rent. I don't know why Hana continues to pretend like I didn't pay for the bills and judging from this tweet, you supposedly have a roommate. So are they on the lease or are you treating their residents the same way you're treating mine? And if they're paying bills, are you going to do the double standard thing with them or just admit you're wrong? Or do you not have a roommate? I don't know, Omnia. <laughs> you're giving mixed signals. Either way, I already disproved this and here the clip. Hana would not be able to have the money to be paying rent. Not only that, but here are the screenshots of me sending Hana money, as well as screenshots of me sending Hana money to also pay for food and dinner. Not only did I feed this person, but I also paid this person's bills. Hana was short $100 when they weren't able to pay the rent the month before they ended up filing the protective order. Wanting to help my partner because I love them and cared about them, I sent them the extra amount of money despite taking up the responsibility for every single one of our bills. So not only did they not pay 100% of the rent, but they didn't have to pay any bills because I was covering that. I didn't just live at Hana's apartment for free. I very much contributed and pulled my own weight. Hana Hi, I'm just coming in here to say this. Never did I claim once, and I even said in the clip in this video that 
I said Hannah's apartment. I literally said in the clip, Hannah's apartment. I don't even know why I'm arguing this, but the only thing that I'm disproving is that I didn't pay bills. Like I absolutely 100% paid bills. But like I said, in the clip, I said Hannah's apartment. So I never claimed that the apartment was mine a single time. So I don't even know why Omnia decided to argue this as if like that was ever something I claimed at any point in the situation. But what the fuck ever, bro. I'm dealing with an idiot anyways. This has been public information even before these videos have come out. Did you just think I forgot? <laughs> this video really is for the most gullible. This part where it states the allegedly abused person is granted possession of the companion animal described as blank remains unchecked. I didn't mention either of the cats that were present in the house when I left to file for my EPO because I didn't think Kai would attempt to remove either cat from the house. This will obviously change in future adaptations of my protective order after I realized that Kai did remove one cat from the premise, that being Gabriella, better known as Gabby. Yeah, dumbass, I'm obviously going to take my cat with me, and if you're going to claim in this video that I'm such a volatile person, I really wonder why you decided to leave the cats home with me while you got a protective order. Don't you think something like that would have triggered your abuser? so much that they would hurt the cats? Don't you think it would trigger my volatility to hurt my animals? But I'm obviously not going to because I'm not an animal abuser. Because you spent this entire video trying to justify why you took my companion animal. You can't sit here and say, well, legally, Kai was charged with abusing me, so he's an abuser. Then when I go, well, legally, my animal was returned to me, so obviously something happened in the courtroom to determine I'm a proper pet owner and not a danger. And then come on this video to continue to claim that I'm not fit to care for animals. With zero evidence, mind you. And remember, if someone doesn't have evidence of their claims, they never fucking happen. However, because Kai only took Gabby, I asked for her specifically to be returned to me on the PO because she was separated from my household and I did not feel like, between the two of us, Kai would be the safer owner to be around. It is that simple. I've been bombarded with questions like, well, did you know Gabby was originally adopted by Kai? Did you know Gabby was Kai's cat before you both started dating? Uh, yes, of course I did. How could I not? I wasn't the one who brought her into the relationship. I still don't understand why me asking for and obtaining Gabby on my protective order was considered a smoking gun. I didn't manipulate the court order and I didn't do it to personally harm Kai. To put this in the simplest of terms, the man is an abuser. Kai is abusive. But why did you take his cat? The reason I took his cat is very similar to the reason why he, like, needed to leave my house. It's because he's not someone you want to be around. It, he's not a safe, you know, person <laughs> to be around. Um... It's just not tangible. He was abusive. Like, literally. I know y'all don't want to admit it sometimes. But that's what happened. I was afraid they'd be... Unwell. Ah, Omnia, elaborate. Tell us how exactly they would be unwell. Because apparently, according to your own request for money in regards to the cats, you were unfit to take care of them without my income. So much so that you had to ask for donations from your audience, as well as a restitution check in regards to them. So how well were the cats in your care? You didn't do this to protect the cats. You did it to spite me and strip me from the one thing you knew that mattered most to me in my life. And if you were so concerned about saving them, you would never entertain the idea of leaving them off the protective order because apparently you knew firsthand how volatile I am. But I'm not volatile. You were angry and bitter and knew this was the best way to get to me. Because if Gabby truly mattered to you, you would fight for her to this day and appeal the decision made to give her back to me like the judge told you that you could. But you didn't. Why? Because you embarrassed yourself in court when I got her back. Did you forget about the act of perjury you made your lawyer commit on your behalf? If not, that's okay. I'll jog your memory. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yes, ma'am. Not for two weeks, but yes, I would. Okay. Um, and you agree that she's capable of care I don't agree with that. I don't. Then you leave one cat in her care? Well, we were together, but now I do not agree that Ms. is capable of taking care of both of our animals since they need to ask for donations in order to take care of them. Okay, that's my last question. She hasn't asked for those donations because you took all the cats 
Someone has money, they can take care of the, they, if they were incapable of taking care of my animals, then they should have never taken them in the first place. If you don't have the money to care for my companion animal that I'm very well and able to take care of, then you should not take them. Again, Ms. Min is able to pay for whatever supplies that she needed, and I paid for those supplies, therefore that they are mine. So she, you believe she does have money and is capable of caring for the cat? Then what would be the reason to lie about it on the internet? You got caught in a lie and you obviously couldn't run from that. You claimed that I was the reason you can't take care of the cats and then turned around and claimed that you were able to take care of them online. So why did you ask for money, Hana? Please, tell the audience. My grandmother went up to the stand to testify against you. The same grandmother who you claimed said that Gabriella couldn't stay with and proved to the court that both Gabriella and Callie had plenty of space to be able to be taken care of by me. You can only imagine how surprised my grandmother was to hear you make claims about her while she was sitting there in the courtroom. You can only imagine her satisfaction satisfaction after Gabriella was returned to me. That doesn't change the fact that even before I lived with my grandmother, I lived in a two-story house with a huge bedroom, a fountain for my cats, high-quality food bowls, two litter boxes, heaps and bounds of treats and wet food, and a huge cat tree. On top of cat toys, catnip, and natural sunlight, as well as my brother who also had a cat for them to interact with. You lived in a one-bedroom apartment that according to your own words, you could barely pay for. And I don't want to hear that YouTube was paying you because if it was, I wouldn't have sent you any money for rent in December. But yes, continue to bullshit your audience to save face. But you're too busy cutting my clips out of context to concern yourself with telling the truth. Here's Omnia's supposed evidence that I'm an aggressive human being. This violently to be satisfactory, let alone good company for any living thing to rely on. I personally would not trust him to take care of a pet rock. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, dude. Huh. That's why I asked for Gabby, and that is why I was granted possession of her since that day. Oh man, Kai outwardly expressed his frustration without physically attacking anything. I wonder why he was so upset. Let's see. It's enough money to replace those items in order for me to operate as efficiently and seamlessly as I did before his assault. Most obviously, the situation has traumatized me in every sense of the word. Yeah, same. I'm physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. Same. It's been difficult for me to stay on track, complete the goals I set for myself each day, and hoist myself out of the rut that Kai has put me in. Same, but replace Kai with Hana. He has isolated me from my parents, friends, and family, and community. Ah! Ah! Oh my God, dude. Ah! I have never in my life ever isolated Hana from their friends or their family or their community a single time ever. I have never done that. I have, n especially when it comes to their friends. Hana has left the house every time that I've lived at that apartment. Hana has left the house every single day and saw their friends at their job all the time. I've never stopped them from doing that. They have even hung out with their friends, went to field trips, all of this shit on their own. I have never stopped them from doing any of that. I've never, I, I have always told them, hey, be safe and just let me know if you need anything. I will be by my phone if you need me for anything. Every single day, Hana left the house they could have saw anyone that they wanted to, and I wouldn't care. Just let me know where you're at, and let me know if you need anything, and if anything happens, I will be right there to go and make something happen so you are safe again. So it really, uh, it makes me so upset that this is the claim that's being made toward me. I hate it. Oh man, Omnia framed this clip like I randomly got upset for no reason and wasn't reacting to them making bogus claims about me? Now surely there can't be a clip where Omnia is present with me in front of the cats, watching me hold and approach them. Oh wait, but there is. Oh shit, hi everyone. Can we see one of the cats? Uh, sure. Hold there, come here. Come Yeah, right here. <laughs> this is Minnie. Do 
you look like you're going for a Thanksgiving family gathering. <laughs> nah. I'm wearing my cardigan that I was wearing yesterday. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty nutty. Hello. You're so precious. She's so tiny. She's such a tiny cat. <laughs> Especially compared to me. <laughs> oh shit, you're so adorable. Oh man. I hope, you guys hope I'm alright. Uh, I will be okay. Aww. Omnia claims I would clear a desk with no evidence and also claims I would throw things with no evidence. And you know what they say, if someone doesn't have evidence of their claims, it never fucking happened. On top of this, Omnia claims I trashed their apartment. And I'm sorry, but I can't sit here and clean your space after I've been told I have three hours to leave. This bitch really wants me to clean up so the police could come and arrest me as I'm tidying up the place. Really asking me to pack my shit in three hours and find a way to get back home, but I gotta clean up after myself. Fuck off. Editing Omnia moments again, sorry. I just think it's wild that Kai has publicly stated multiple times that I quote unquote didn't even come to court. Like I didn't renew my preliminary protective order five times between December 13th and April 15th. Literally what? All of these scans here clearly demonstrate that I was present for the court proceedings that mattered. And Kai is just upset that I didn't show up for status hearings after that point because my lawyers and victims protective aid told me I didn't need to be. This is evidence enough to prove that I was intimately involved with the case when it mattered. You were intimately involved with the case when it mattered? Are you stupid? Regardless of a status hearing or anything like that, every day of court is important. And you would think that if you showed up on all of the days that quote mattered, you don't think the final day of court is one that matters? The day that I receive my plea? You didn't think to show up then? <laughs> you didn't think to show up on April 21st where my last few charges were also dismissed, which was the last day of court? You didn't think that mattered? What I'm referencing when I'm saying you didn't even come to court is because you literally did not come to court on that day. Did I say Omnia didn't come to court at all. It wasn't just status hearings either. And I literally said in my pinned comment, which I'm sure you read, that you didn't come to court since September of 2022, which is an irrefutable fact. You wouldn't have to go through all this trouble to obtain the court recording or have to call the prosecutor at all if you showed up to court. The fact you even had to do so goes to show that it was a day that mattered, but you didn't care enough to show up. So don't give yourself ass pats because you came to get a protective order renewed. I didn't miss a single day Day of court. The worst I've been is late, and that's only because dates were changed without notifying me, just as our trial date was also changed. Only for me to figure out that it's a recurring problem in that court. Well, at some point, I can think of some reasons behind that, but it's best for you to speak on that too. Yeah, they were both my companion animals. Actually, Minnie is still my companion animal. She's right there. Do you see that little red, gray part in the bean bag? Yeah. She's sleeping, but they're both my companion animal. Um, and I did that very frankly, because one, I want to live with them forever. <laughs> so when you get a companion animal, like that legally recognized, you can take your cats with you everywhere you go without penalty. So that was one. It's, it's mainly a thing that a lot of people with PTSD do because when you have a comfort animal that's like you're attached to them and you want to be able to take them on airplanes without needing to like pay for it. You want to be able to move into apartments that may or may not accept pets. Like that's important to you. So companion animal, like making that squared away helps you with all those things. So that was one. And two... To be honest, I wanted to make them both companion animals because I wanted them to stay together. So if I had them, they were together all the time. Like they are both my companion animals. Like I didn't want them to be separated because at a, at a point when Kai took Gabby, the next day Minnie was like throwing up and like not eating and like not using the litter and she was sick and I was like what's going on and I found out later it was because of the sudden change of like taking a cat that was integrated in the household that Minnie had become adapted to and just removing her and never bringing her back again all of a sudden like she started to get ill because her fucking sister isn't with her anymore.
Oh my god, this is a load of shit. When Gabriella came home to me, it didn't even take her a day to remember me and act the same way she normally does. When Gabriella came home for the second time, the same thing happened. Maybe the reason that Minnie was sick and throwing up was because I, her dad, was missing from that household. And bro, taking pictures of Gabriella and Minnie in the same location does not mean that they were acclimated to one another and goes to show that Omnia knows nothing about Gabriella. Gabriella is just like me. She could care less if another cat was living at the house. If anything, she prefers to live alone. Gabriella was tolerant of Minnie. She could care less if Minnie was there or not. Also, none of these excuses is a good reason to take my cat from me, and if you were so concerned about doing that, you would have done it the moment you put Gabriella on the protective order. You would have gathered plenty of evidence in order to prove that Gabriella was unsafe in my care, but you don't have the same confidence in the courtroom as you do online because you can't bullshit there. ESA animals. Kai tried to frame my obtaining ESA certs on both cats as a means to legally bar him from receiving Gabby after I was granted possession of her on my protective order I could imagine that you wanted them to help with the recent abuse you went through but he made it look like you did it to legally keep his cat unjustly by unjustly means no <laughs> no i'm not trying to make kai suffer i'm not trying to make kai suffer i think people don't understand that you're not trying to make me suffer? Did you forget that your DMs are a public record? Did you forget about the entire Discord fanfiction where you fantasized about me suffering with multiple people, minors included? Did you forget you said this? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to disappear from the internet as much as possible. And then when he's in jail, which I anticipate will happen with the 95% confidence, I'll just come back and be like, we got him. <laughs> Guys, gals, gays, and embays, we got him. Or this? Good, good. I appreciate that. He has a lot to say and I anticipate that'll fuck him in court, but we'll see what happens. I'm praying this all works out in my favor because I've been fucked over by this guy time and time again, and I just want him to be locked away because he's a danger for real. But ironically enough, you skirted over these DMs hoping that nobody went out of their way to read them, but I did. Wanting me to be locked away privately and taking my cat with that same desire and then claiming you're not trying to ruin my life publicly are two very conflicting statements. And I'm going on a limb to say this. I'm going off script to say this. Publicize the stream, Amia. Why are you keeping the stream under wraps? Because there's more that you said in that stream that goes against your testimony that you're putting on video. So publicize that stream. Why did you privatize it? I wonder why. And regarding the Discord fanfiction, did you forget what your little friend Luna said? Day four. I didn't sleep at all last night. Spent the whole night tossing and turning, trying to ignore the sound of a distant longing meow. It was my dear Gabriella crying out for me to save her. Oh, who am I kidding? She probably doesn't even know my smell anymore, let alone me. She'd be so devastated if she knew what really happened to her dad. The meowing must have been Candy. No, her name was Sandy. Or was it Sally? My only real family. She would never betray me like Gabby or even Minnie. Maybe I can convince them she's my support cat and I need her. They'll fall for that, right? They'll fall for that, right, Omnia? The court would fall for that, wouldn't they? Oh, wait, they didn't. But I'm guessing that's the reason this video series is only made for people willing to have their mind change and not for the people who are already educated about what the fuck you did. Back to the appeal hearing. By the time September 12th rolled around, Kai, for some strange reason, fired that same lawyer that helped him acquire the appeal. So he represented himself at the hearing. I represented myself during that court hearing with no knowledge on how to do it whatsoever and still managed to adapt with ease. Either way, I stopped working with my previous lawyer because he was extremely unprofessional and asked me for another three thousand dollars in order to represent me in circuit court so i cut my losses and stopped working with him like i said i'm not made of money court is expensive i didn't really like the guy but i don't know why this is a point either way considering i still got my cat back and a satisfactory conclusion to this entire mess also on top of this the my lawyer that i had at the time didn't even help me get to get the appeal i just went downstairs to the clerk office and got an appeal paper other than that, he didn't do shit. I did all of that by myself. So much for misrepresenting people's actions and shit like that. Just shut the fuck up, Omni, if you don't know what you're talking about. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. You know how far I am in this video? One hour and 13, 13 uh, minutes. I'm fucking tired, bro. <laughs> Wish me luck, man. Wish me luck. 
My lawyer and I were worried because we didn't know why Kai wanted to appeal the two-year protective order I was granted on April 15th, but once the hearing began, it became very obvious very quickly that Kai only wanted to appeal one provision of the PO. That one being, you guessed it, my possession of the companion animal described as Gabriella the cat. That is what my lawyer was talking about in this part of phone call too. He, he did not recall absolutely everything, but he did recall that one of the things, one of the issues in the case was that, you remember the issue with the, with the cat? Mm -hmm. um, and then it went to that lengthy protective order hearing. Right. And he was able to demonstrate that he brought the cat to the relationship. If you watched part one and were wondering what he was referring to by that, this is what that is. The hearing was very cut and dry. Kai told the judge that he brought Gabby into the relationship and that he was the one who originally adopted Gabby before meeting me. The judge, without any consideration of other nuance, said, well, if Kai was the one who originally adopted Gabby, then possession of Gabby should be given to Kai. And that was it, literally. The judge didn't consider anything much farther than that. He didn't consider the fact that Kai stood indicted for six charges at that point, a good portion of those being aggressive in nature, such as domestic assault and battery or or strangulation. He didn't even consider the implications of what taking care of Gabby would look like should Kai get arrested for a significant portion of time. This is where my lawyer advocated for me and we reached a compromise. Kai was to receive Gabby back and that provision of the protective order was to be appealed. However, it would be replaced with a different provision. I'll show this protective order on screen now. It's the exact same as the April 15th protective order so I won't read it. However, two fundamental things changed. One, it is now active until September 12th, 2020. 2024 instead of April 15th, 2024, and two, instead of me being granted possession of the companion animal described as Gabriella the cat, the new provision at the very bottom of the second page reads, should the respondent or Kai receive significant incarceration time, the order is without prejudice to the petitioner asked to return the cat Gabriella to them under this protective order. Apologies for the cutoff, I don't know why they wrote it all the way at the bottom. Either way, I returned Gabby to Kai that same day, and despite many, many tears of sadness, I can only hope that she is being taken care of well wherever she finds herself. I can't, and probably never will, trust Kai again for pretty much anything, but I can at least say that I have faith that Gabby will be okay. And that's all that matters to me. I don't care about Kai. I just care that Gabby is all right. I love how the judge is completely right when they consider Omnia's side of things, but when they agree with me, they're suddenly wrong. Omnia, again, doesn't speak on the fact that they were caught in a lie in court. Being indicted for a charge is an accusation, not a definitive prospect of guilt. I don't understand why the same person who claims they never got a chance to defend themselves is now complaining even after they got a chance to defend themselves. It it wasn't just me proving that I bought Gabby into the relationship, but apparently the only person ignoring nuance is the judge and not Omnia. But the judge is only valid when they agree with Omnia. Not when they deny them the extra provision to shut me up on social media, nor when they accept the appeal of me taking my cat back. I don't know why Omnia nor their lawyer would be so worried as to why I would appeal the protective order or why they wouldn't think the reason I would do it is to get Gabriella back unless they were done. I even spoke to Omnia's lawyer and told them thank you for representing Presenting them even though we disagree and I had nothing against them. And why would you have faith at all that Gabriella would be okay? Apparently I'm a volatile and dangerous human being, so there would be no reason at all to have faith that she's okay. So am I volatile toward animals or not, Amia? Make up your mind. But that's fine. Here's a video of me hanging out with both of my cats, Gabriella and Chie, and obviously they have a nice, comfortable place to live in my very luxurious apartment that my name is on the lease for, by the way. Eating food and playing with toys that I didn't need donations to get. Gabis, give Gab. Hello. I love you. I love you so much. You're so cute. I love you. Look how comfortable she is. She is sprawled out, bro. I love you. I love you. Yes. Yes. I love you. <laughs> Where is Chie? Hey, Chie. Hey, girl. I love you. Oh, she's purring. Oh, hey, girl. I love you. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Love you, Chin. Love you, Chin Chin. I love you, Chi Chi. <laughs> She's so small. She's so small. Oh, oh, yawns. Good night, babes. But they wouldn't trust me with a pet rock. I wouldn't trust Omnia to be able to feed a pet rock without asking for someone else to pay for its food. So much for that restitution check. I wonder why prosecution thought that the cat case was an issue that resulted in the plea deal that I received. But Omnia will never tell you. And speaking of plea deals, Omnia leaves out in all of these videos the previous plea deal I received before the current plea deal I have now. Why would the prosecution change the plea deal, Omnia? I can give you one of the reasons. Because not only did the case with Gabriella shoot your credibility, but when you testify in the preliminary hearing, you couldn't even recount the events of your own, quote, abuse because you, quote, couldn't remember. While you were so busy patting your ass about probable cause, you didn't realize your own statements fucked you that day too, as well as your tweets, which is why when the judge looked at them during the day you attempted to shut me up on social media, you were still denied. Goes to show why you still won't recount the events of your abuse in your final video in the series, despite being so fine with posting pictures and DMing random strangers about it, well, the entire matter popped off. Why? Because your story is inconsistent and you keep lying to the people around you about what you did. But I'm moving on to part three. There are only two clips I want to go over in part three because Omnia spends more time explaining things than actually proving that I did them. Here's the first clip I want to go over. But this is the part where I think things get interesting. I had no time to leave any note on the iPad considering I was on the phone at the time with my mother and also talking to the police and gathering my belongings. So Kai says that he didn't have time to leave any note because he was on the phone with his mom and busy gathering his belongings, right? But in the same video, an odd 15 minutes later, he says, this. Here's one the text Omnia sent to their friend on the day that the protective order was filed. I took a picture of it and sent it to my mom so I had something that I could at least show everyone that this entire victim facade is not a real thing. <sighs> How does one person lack self-perception to this degree? Because Kai just single-handedly incriminated himself with this clip. So apparently Kai didn't have time to leave a note on my iPad at the time, but Kai had enough time to log into whatever device he's taking this photo from, go to my messages app, find this message, take a photo, then send it to his mom who he's on the phone with a mere seven minutes prior to when the note is written, but doesn't have time to write it? It's a seven word sentence, dude. Be fucking for real. Omnia. The iMac was already unlocked when this message showed up. So yes, I viewed it. That doesn't mean I'm going out of my way to write a note. And given that you're so curious as to why I started packing, it's because yes, I was aware of the fact I had to leave before the protective order was served to me. My mom was literally on the phone while I was talking to police. I have access to the iPad and iMac, but that doesn't mean that I have access to your emails. That's what I mean. I might've been mistaken in my wording about that. And if so, I take accountability. And just because I leave you encouraging notes doesn't mean that I'm going to write one in the midst of packing up. Yeah, I have time to pack up, but I don't have time to write something to you. That's why I just took a picture. I know who I was texting in this photo, so I checked to see the timestamps for myself. At 6.05 p.m. I said, hi friend, it's Hana. They replied saying, hi, at 6.06 p.m. Five minutes later, at 6.11 p.m. I said, hi bestie, um, things are happening, many things. Three minutes later, they asked, good things or not so good? I didn't reply back to them for 20 minutes until 6.34 p.m. where I said, not so good. Kai, uh, hit me. In this screenshot of Kai texting his mom, it shows that he sent the photo he took of my conversation with my friend at 6.27 p.m. That's a mere seven minutes prior to when this note appears in my notes app and seven minutes before I replied to my friend again. Editing Omnia here, I have a couple things I forgot to add. So first of all, Kai said this. None of these notes were written on the iPad considering I have no access to the iPad. But he did. I'll explain how. Kai said he would leave me notes through my Mac, right? Every note I would leave Hana would be written from the MacBook notes app. Meaning Kai had access to my Mac through the associated password. And if he has access to my Mac through the associated password, then he has access to my iPad through the associated password too. You know why? And this is really embarrassing. All of my Apple products have the same passcode. It's the same four numbers on all devices. That was such a useless and unnecessary lie. Second of all, I wanted to read the thing Kai writes at the bottom of this. He says, my mom urged me to grab whatever I could at the time, which goes to show I was on the phone with her. So you went to my 
my eye messages first. This is about the least incriminating thing I have ever seen. I really said they used emojis. They didn't get abused, guys. It's all a facade. Victim facade. Like, I use emojis all the time, but okay. I sent her a text when all this happened shortly before Hana claims I left a message on their notes app. I was not in the house for 15 minutes because police were actually serving me slash explaining my order. 15 minutes after this message is sent, this is highly unlikely, and here's why. Remember how I said Kai left my apartment to go find me at my school's building at around 4.30 p.m.? Then at around 5.15, Kai turns around to walk back to my apartment because an officer informed him that he is going to be leaving today. Again, I told officers he was trying to find me, so they camped around the school building he indicated he was headed towards. When Kai arrived at the building, the officer redirected him back to my apartment, indicating to him that he has an EPO waiting to be served on him. Kai walks back to my house between 5.14 and 5.53 p.m. He likely gets to my apartment at around 6 p.m. He took the longest route possible, I literally don't know why, but by then, officers are also camped outside my apartment for whenever he arrives. Kai walks up to my door, the police are there, they serve and explain his order to him for 15-ish minutes, and by the end of that, they write down that he was fully served by 6.15 p.m. in their paperwork. Kai definitely did not step foot inside my apartment before he was served, just thought I'd share that. A lot to unpack here. For one, just because I texted you at 5.12 doesn't mean that's exactly when I found out that I was supposed to leave. I don't know where you got this assumption from. There were no officers at the school by the time I arrived there. No one redirected me back to the apartment. There weren't any officers at the apartment and you wouldn't know if there were or not because one, I stopped sharing my location with you and two, you weren't there. Four, why is it that you were literally watching me walk back to the apartment on Find My, which proves you were on your phone. The screenshot is taken from your phone and not the iMac and somehow I'm the one who wrote it? Let's go back to this whole watching me on Find My thing. This proves you tried getting me arrested on that day, which completely goes against your whole, I wasn't trying to press charges, nonsense. Maybe you didn't want to do it on that day, but you were definitely going to do it. But that's not even what I'm worried about. Do you not remember when you said this to Valen in DMs? Yeah, I burst into tears and had an entire panic attack in the police department until an officer could take me to a private room because I thought he was going to show up. Omnia also claims that Oh, why does Kai change his story in regards to the Patreon message? Why did you change your story when you were DMing Valen? Because you said to Valen that you were hiding in the police department, yet on Twitter you're sitting here talking about, I was for real scared shitless and was with my mentor, supervisor, and many university police officers the entire time because I was hiding from Kai in a campus building. I didn't know he was served the protective order at 6.15pm until later and wasn't sitting on my notes app waiting, for, waiting to set him up. But you were watching me walk back to the apartment though? So, so what, which is it, Omnia? <laughs> but I'm the one who's inconsistent with my story? Okay. <laughs> you thought I was going to show up an entire three hours before I even went anywhere? If I was going to show up, anywhere, I would have told you. Just like I told you I was going to show up to figure out what happened to you. You also made the claim in this exact same screenshot that I try to go to the places that I last saw you at, which you know that I don't do. Never have I once headed to a location that you ended up at. The only reason I would is if I felt like you were in danger. And since you lied to me and said that you were at your job for a meeting an hour before you usually have them, and you weren't where you said you were going, I obviously texted you to make sure you were okay, and even called you to confirm that fact. I didn't think anything of it because you told me you were at the meeting and I assumed that your device was just glitching and didn't register the correct location, which it does from time to time. Funny how you leave out the fact that we mutually shared our location and passcodes to one another, but clearly that wouldn't fit the narrative of the over-obsessive ex-partner. Should probably go to explain why you knew exactly what I texted my friends on December 3rd, oddly enough. The only reason I would ever be concerned about Omnia's location is because we were the only two people who lived in that apartment. I had no issue whatsoever with them going anywhere as long as it wasn't late at night. And since their location is shared with me, if anything did happen, I knew exactly where to go. Say I did go to where you were at. It wasn't to hurt you, it's to make sure you are okay. Which is why you didn't hear me for the next three hours. Goes to show that I trusted that you were telling me the truth. The only reason I would ever keep up with your location is because I want to know you got to where you were going safely, especially since I'm not coming with you. If you think I was going to walk all the way from the apartment to you, you must be out of your mind. Funny how you never showed anybody 
this screenshot, nor did you show anyone the several conversations you had with me the day you were supposedly abused, as well as when you left me at home with the cats multiple times before you even filed for the protective order. But again, it doesn't fit the narrative. Did you forget when you said this? When I arrived at the police department, Kai actually called me, but I didn't answer because I was so freaked, only for him to reveal he was tracking my location. Why is it when you DM Valen, you suddenly act like it's such a bad thing, I know the places where you last went, but here publicly, you have no problem telling people you were watching my every step back to the apartment all the way up to the point you knew I took the longest route? For someone who says, this is such an unnecessary lie, which I'm not telling, this is really such a weird and unnecessary detail detail unless you were trying to imply I was doing something malicious by taking the long route, which I wasn't. That's just how I knew how to get back. If you had plenty of time to watch me walk back to the apartment, you had plenty of time to write seven words during your freak out session at the police department. Why would you need to freak out if you already lied about where you were? Were you freaking out when you sent your friend your supposedly unserious text message? Or did you start to take the situation seriously after that? Or did you take it seriously when you FaceTimed your friend? I'm willing to wager none of this happened considering the fact that no officer or anything adhered to this narrative at all, and neither was it on any of your court-submitted statements, which, mind you, are drastically different from your public testimony. But I'll get to that in a moment. But let's talk about this caption that you left on the video. I also love how me making jokes about being unserious with my trauma equals you must not have been traumatized to Kai. Like, you do realize that humor is a very common way people cope with their trauma, right? Ah, <sighs> I don't know, Omnia, trying to convince people you were so scared shitless and freaking out while you were at the police station, yet somehow having plenty of time to joke about your trauma is pretty conflicting to the narrative that you're trying to solidify as this fear-stricken victim. Which one is it, Omnia? Drama or trauma? Were you coping when you put all these edits in these videos, desperately attempting to be funny? Or were you taking your, quote, trauma seriously? I don't know, just kind of weird behavior, especially on the first day a supposed victim decides to actually take, quote, action against their abuser. Seems like you had plenty of time to joke about your trauma and text anyone you know about the situation, yet the cats didn't cross your mind once somehow. But you wanted to keep them together and protect them so bad, right? Had time to make jokes, but literally none to go get some evidence for the whole strangulation charge, which you seem to constantly avoid talking about, but we'll get to that soon. Which is why, again, this charge was dismissed and never held up. For the millionth time and for the love of all that is holy, my brother in Christ, the charges were dismissed because you took a plea deal. How many times must I reiterate that? Prosecution felt no confidence in it, like with all seven of my other charges. No. How do I explain this in plain English? If prosecution felt no confidence in the violation of the protective order or any of the other charges that made it past the preliminary trial hearing, why did Kai not only get charged with all of them, but indicted with all of them? Because you established problems probable cause, dipshit. <laughs> and probable cause isn't guilt, nor does it result in a conviction. Let me flip this question since Omnia is pretending that they don't have the mental capacity to understand semantics. If prosecution was so confident in my charges, what's the point of changing the plea deal? But Omnia keeps cutting out the fact that there was more than one plea deal. If prosecution was so confident in my charges, why are they indicted charges and not convictions? You love to use my conviction to really drive home my guilt, but can't ever seem to ask yourself why the plea deal was changed, nor explain to people that being charged with a crime is simply an accusation, just as an indictment is. But since you want to define to your audience what foreboding means, let's define indictment, monarch of Google definitions. An indictment is a formal accusation that a person has committed a crime. In jurisdictions that use the concept of felonies, the most serious criminal offense is a felony. Jurisdictions that do not use the felonies concept often use that of an indictable offense, an offense that requires an indictment. An indictment is an accusation. Prosecution felt confident in the indictment, but they didn't feel confident in the conviction. And play them the rest of the clip, Omnia. Show them the revision to the protective order you keep trying to hide from, not only from hidden tweets, but even on video. But since you won't show them the rest of the clip... Hello, I'm me. I'm Kai. For one, again. I never wrote this, and let me entertain this. Let's say I did. Eventually, this will catch up to you is not a threat. 
especially not a threat to your person. Just as me tweeting about you and the situation on my social media platform privately isn't one either, which is why, again, this charge was dismissed and never held up. Prosecution felt no confidence in it, like with all seven of my other charges. Again, protective orders exist to protect people from physical harm and further abuse. They are not a document that you can use to shut people up on social media, steal their cat, or even use as a catalyst to send someone to jail over an iPhone notes message, which I'm willing to believe you wrote yourself. I wonder why the rest of this clip never ended up in your video. And since you're so pressed, I downplayed the severity of the notes message when I'm saying I didn't do it is because I literally just said, let's say I did, which means I'm entertaining the reality you're pushing to your audience. Maybe this bullshit is going to work on your audience or maybe even the next partner that you have, Omnia, but I promise you it will never work on me. I see you right through you. But you know what? Let me give you some credit. Here's the next clip. This PO violation back on May 13th, 2022, about a month after the violation. Here he is explaining it on a stream he titled, My Last Stream. On April 23rd, Hana called the police because I mistakenly, a, a, mistakenly a message was sent to them to their Patreon. And it wasn't supposed to go to them. The problem was was that Callie, Gabby, and my new cat, Callie, slept on my fucking keyboard while I was going through our messages. And while I was going through our messages, I typed something out because I was really hurt. And it was supposed to stay in the little, like, message thingy, like the little where you type your messages at, like in the Twitch chat. It was supposed to stay in there. And, like... I went downstairs to go and get some food. And the moment that I go upstairs, Callie is on my laptop. And come to find out the message that was in the little thing sent. So Hana sees the message and instantly goes to the police. It wasn't a bad message at all. I didn't threaten them or anything like that. One, it doesn't matter if it was a bad message or non-threatening, Kai is not supposed to contact me whatsoever. But more importantly, you mean to tell me that Kai's cat, Callie, perfectly lifted their paw and clicked only on the enter key or only hit the mouse pad? Because if you ever had a cat get on your keyboard, you know for a fucking fact that they aren't too gracious with it. It's just so unserious. I would expect to see at least some keyboard smash somewhere in this message if Kai was seriously telling the truth about this, but the message is pristine. Furthermore, in his most recent recent video, this is how he chooses to explain it. I wrote it in the midst of looking back at our Patreon messages for anything significant I needed to use for litigation. And given I had no closure and our breakup was very fresh, I wrote how I felt at the time. In the midst of finishing my expression of all those feelings, the message sent after I closed the Patreon app. I didn't think anything of it because I was sure Omnia had me blocked at the time. Sorry I forgot to block my abuser on fucking Patreon of all places. Like I literally did not remember that. That's such a random website to message someone on. And also, wait, Kai said the Patreon message was sent after he closed out of the site. Let's not even attempt to ascertain how that's physically possible, but Kai also somehow knew that it was sent after he closed out? How? Also notice how there is no mention of Kali whatsoever this time around. I guess it would be too embarrassing to use her as a scapegoat now that it's been a year since the violation. Whatever. You come to your own conclusions about why his story consistently changes on this. I'll concede here and say that I misunderstood how the situation happened, which is why I clarified in my last video. Callie was not the reason that the message sent. I didn't know the message sent until police showed up at my door, so I'm assuming when the app closed, since the message was so long, one of my indents registered as an input, or the app just glitched. Clearly, I wasn't in contact with Omnia before that, so it was a very obvious accident. you think if I wanted to talk to you, I would actually try to more than once, and you blatantly avoid reading, this is why I said this. In no way did I expect this message to get to you, and yeah, I would imagine you weren't keeping up with your Patreon messages since you prided yourself so much on blocking me everywhere. And since you have a clip of my stream, was this you gathering evidence, Omnia, or was it stalking and obsession? And if you're going to blame it on your Discord friends, is this another instance of birds of a feather flocking together? I guess I have a stalker on my hands, according to your logic. Guess you're obsessed with me. Anyways, moving on to part four. Kai took 
so much issue with these tweets, which I'll show now. This is simply Omnia making it seem like they were closer to these victims than they actually were. Omnia did not know any of them. So the theatrics about how amazing, driven, ambitious, and dedicated they are, despite not being friends, family, or acquainted with any of them, or even remotely knowing any of them personally, is quite frankly laughable and super performative, as are most of Omnia's public statements. Hey, Omnia, I know this is hard for you to grasp, but I didn't say it was laughable to grieve victims. Instead of reacting, you should maybe listen to what I said in the video. But I know your guilt is keeping you from doing so. I never said that you knew them well, but to go on this entire tangent about how ambitious, driven, and dedicated they are is laughable and performative because you don't know these people. And you don't. So why would you say that and then later go on a break from Twitter like you were the one who lost a family member? Also, notice how they said that they saw one of the victims but never hung out with that victim or got to know that victim, it's one thing to have condolences, which is very valid, but to sit here and act like you were an active member of any of these victims' lives, as if you even knew them enough to say anything about them after their deaths, is very disrespectful to the victims' families. Oh my god. If you're going to repeat what the victims' friends and family have said, platform their statements instead of making your own, dumbass. I don't know why you keep trying to skirt around the fact that this is something that you did. You had half a mind to do it with Technoblade, but suddenly forget when it's this situation? Why didn't you post Technodad's statements while you were talking about them in your video? I can tell you why. Because you didn't give a fuck that Technoblade died. You just added his situation to drive home a point in your video for personal gain, just as you did with the Creepshow art series. But want to be the end-all be all of trauma and drama. Just admit that you fucked up here. Your performative is hell. That's all there is to it. It's even funnier because when they went over the Technoblade situation, they were willing to concede that they didn't know anything about him. Yet with this, they want to pretend they were so impacted by the situation, despite making these victims' deaths about themselves. God, this clip is fucking disgusting. It's insane that all I had to say was that these victims were amazing, driven, ambitious, and dedicated, which are adjectives their friends and family use to describe them, and I am simply repeating that, for Kai to then extrapolate that I am closer to them than I ever claim to be. It's wild that Kai claims that it's perfectly valid to share condolences, but somehow believes that these tweets demonstrate that I am exploiting their deaths. Not only do I not lead anyone on to believe that I'm closer to these victims than I am, but Kai attempts to draw a false equivalency between what I said about Technoblade, who was a content creator I never watched, and fellow students who I would literally see around campus and were classmates with in real life at my university. Is it not normal to feel terribly and grieve the senseless murders of three students who shared a college community with you in a school shooting that you and all your college friends were present for? Is it not normal to feel emotional when someone who used to fill a seat in a department you majored in is now gone? Is it not normal to feel guilty that you get to graduate when two of the three three men who died in the shooting last November were supposed to graduate alongside you last month, it's almost as if, if they were still alive, they were supposed to walk down the stage to confer their diplomas with me and celebrate their accomplishments alongside me. Is it not normal to have your heart sink in your chest when you think about that? Or to think that that could have been me? Since Kai wants to interrogate me on how well I knew these men, I'll give some background. The black community at my college is very small and tight-knit, and while I wasn't personally friends with any of the victims, many of my friends were. Being around them during this time was incredibly eye-opening and also, frankly, so dark. Consoling these friends, grieving with them, hearing them disclose treasured anecdotes about them to me, that does impact me. I am well aware that Kai likes to speak for me and say that I'm pretending to be impacted by the situation, but holy shit. Maybe just consider that it is entirely possible for students who attended a school that just experienced a shooting and three people that they shared classes with, interests with, friends with, and were classmates or peers to is traumatic. Maybe for once in Kai's goddamn life, he can at least try to understand what the hell basic empathy is and see why someone, anyone, who shares the same community with these men would be devastated by such an event. You don't have to know someone on an intimate level to be emotional that they were murdered in a school shooting event that occurred at your school. So is Kai not supposed to grieve Etika's death despite looking up to him as a content creator because he didn't know him personally, or Takeoff, or literally anyone else? It's almost as though people can recognize when something shouldn't have happened. Like maybe these people shouldn't have died in a school shooting. Maybe this content creator I like shouldn't have died 
all because he was being relentlessly bullied and harassed online. And recognizing when something shouldn't have happened or being sad about that fact doesn't mean you are making their deaths about you. If anything, it's keeping these people at the forefront of your mind because their lives were unjustly taken and you know that that is wrong. To say it is disrespectful to the families to reiterate all the positive things they and the victim's friends shared about them and truly believing that of them, standing alongside them, even if we are strangers. If anything, the families have only ever indicated that they were appreciative of our school and of the students at our school for banding together to help support them, to donate to them and their GoFundMes, to send them thoughtful and kind letters, to mourn the loss of their sons and brothers and cousins and nephews who didn't deserve to be robbed from them, to let them know that their students will always have a place in our hearts and that we as a university will never condone the student who took them from us. But who the fuck am I kidding? Kai wouldn't get that. He's just a fucking asshole. It makes me sick to my stomach. Let's just keep going. Omnia, shut the fuck up. Oh my God. I'm so surprised that there is anyone here who is buying this bullshit. You went on this entire tangent just to say that your friends knew them and you didn't. And like I said, it's valid to grieve, but you absolutely 100% did make it about yourself. Don't turn on the emotional manipulation switch just because I'm the only one not dumb enough to buy your fake empathy. If this is what you wanted to say, you would have said it. Play the rest of the clip because that's not the only thread that you release and you know that. So watching you go on this fake ass speech knowing exactly what you did is insane. Also, read my tweet. For someone who prides themselves on not keeping up with me and wants to DM people saying that I'm block evading, you sure are doing that yourself. So I ask again, is it gathering evidence or is it stalking and obsession? This is what the tweet said. Man, Etika would have went fucking crazy today. Miss that nigga so much. Fuck mental illness, for real. He deserves so many more years. Joy-Con boys for life. So glad I was there when they were going strong. This tweet is a celebration of Etika's life and community. In no way did I say here, Etika was such a charismatic YouTuber, just like I am. Etika was fighting with mental health, just like I was. But I don't say those things because the post isn't about me, idiot. It's about celebrating a man who killed himself after being harassed and bombarded with hate by people who didn't understand his plight. He created an incredible community I am honored to have been part of, made friends with people who I am honored to call my friends now. Everyone in my corner, people who know Etika, celebrated him the same way and did not make any statements pertaining to themselves like you did with these victims. We are not the same. None of the people celebrating Etika decided to take month-long Twitter breaks and go on long tangents about how they just can't take it as if they were the one who lost a family member. Play the rest of the clip and address your statements in regards to Technoblade. Read your own tweets. But that's cool. I'll play the clip for you in its complete context since you seem to have such a hyper fixation with taking me out of it. Seems to be a habit with you. Guess your guilt stopped you from watching the rest of the video. The third and fourth time my abuser directly violated my protective order, including the evidence I have of Kai's third and fourth protective order violation. A thread. Phone number blurred. Trigger warning for mention of school shooting. This one is long, so apologies if anything is confusing slash unclear. On November 13, 2022, a horrible tragedy occurred at my college. There was a school shooting where three of my classmates died and two were injured. Thankfully, the two that were injured had successful recoveries, but Deshaun Perry, Devin Chandler, and Lavelle Davis Jr. were murdered. To this day, I think about these victims and how their deaths were so devastatingly senseless. Amazing, driven, ambitious, dedicated souls who had huge hopes and dreams for their future, just like I do. Also, I, 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 can I just cut in while I'm doing this voiceover? Notice how they had to bring in themselves, just like I do. This has nothing to do... Okay. <laughs> Deshaun was a studio art major. I saw him frequently in the art department. Again, this is simply Omnia making it seem like they were closer to these victims than they actually were. Omnia did not know any of them. So the theatrics about how amazing, driven, ambitious, and dedicated they are, despite not being friends, family, or acquainted with any of them, or even remotely knowing any of them personally, is quite frankly laughable and super performative, as are most of Omnia's public statements. Also, notice how they said that they saw one of the victims but never hung out with that victim or 
got to know that victim, it's one thing to have condolences, which is very valid. But to sit here and act like you were an active member of any of these victims' lives, as if you even knew them enough to say anything about them after their deaths, is very disrespectful to the victims' families. It's even funnier because when they went over the Technoblade situation, they were willing to concede that they didn't know anything about him. Yet with this, they want to pretend they were so impacted by the situation, despite making these victims' deaths about themselves. I'll get into that in a moment. Here's a clip of Omnia going over the Technoblade situation. I'd like to keep Technoblade section relatively short because this is, in a way, an ongoing situation as it's happened very recently and as someone who hasn't been close to him or watched his content regularly, I don't want to take up more space than I should. But I do think this situation is important to highlight and just another example of how certain YouTubers and content creators will stop at nothing to get a quick buck. Their deaths justifiably shook me and my entire college community to our cores. You never think a school shooting will happen to your school until it does. And I truthfully keep these three stellar black men in my heart and memory every single day. They deserve so much more time. The message we received from the school that night was also very terrifying. An example of some of the alerts students received are shown below. And the police claimed they couldn't find the shooter until the next morning, November 14th. My roommate and I stayed up all night in fear. At 1.35 a.m. on November 14th, I received a text from a number I didn't recognize, asking if I was safe. One strange thing I noticed about the phone number was its area code. It's an area code that belongs to a region Kai currently resides in. The typing style also made me mad sus. I have to jump in for this too as well. Just because the phone number has my area code does not mean that it is me. <laughs> my phone number has not changed. <laughs> oh my god. I had a sneaking suspicion it was Kai. So after some deflection to the question, who is this? I straight up asked the person behind the number if they were Kai at 2.45 a.m. The person didn't reply until 5.34 p.m. later that same day, saying they can't tell me. Dead giveaway number one. I left it alone for a few hours because I didn't know how to approach it. Finally, by 11.51 p.m., after hours of sleep deprivation and under the influence of some weed, I spoke honestly. I knew it was Kai, I just didn't know how he managed to find my number. I changed it after December 8th. And this this is where I need to interject. I too would like to know how the fresh hell I found out about Omnia's number that only Omnia knew at 1.35 a.m. at night. I did not discover Omnia had a shooting at their school until the next morning, which I'll cover in a moment. We live in the same state, so it started trending in my location too. That is the only reason I said anything about it. Not only that, but in these texts, Omnia literally asked the number who they are and if they are me. If me not having your new number isn't enough to prove that the person you're talking to is clearly not me, you would think that the fact that this person is not operating from my number, which remains unchanged, nor talks like me, would be enough to convince you that this is not me. But it gets worse. This absolute freak show of a person, if you haven't caught on by now, Kai, then proceeded to send me a motherfucking Google Docs link that started off with say something in open brackets to entice me to type in the doc. This is so fucking weird on so many fucking levels. It's psychotic. It's also incredibly elaborate, and I find it really interesting that you know exactly why the Google document was created. That is, if it even exists, and it wasn't some bullshit you and whoever was trying to make in order to get me behind bars. I am being given entirely too much credit over something this stupid. I wanted to make sure I was 100% right in my prediction, but I didn't know how. I wanted to click on the link, but I knew Kai would have been able to see that I was looking at the document because Google Docs shows a little icon at the top right if someone is actively viewing it. Honestly, sometimes I'm the smartest while I'm high. I think of the most creative motherfucking solutions. I long pressed on the Google Docs link and have populated the most recent preview of what was being said and done in the document without indicating I was watching the doc editor. Omnia attempting to pat themselves on the back as if they did something here only again highlights their narcissism. It's giving when criminals love to talk about how creative and good they are with getting away with crime only for the detective to be like three steps ahead of them. Like no one is buying this. It literally doesn't make sense. Couldn't even finish their thread without stroking their 
ego. And you mean to tell me that you were thinking about these school shooting victims every day, but chose to get high a day after their deaths and making a huge deal about it on Twitter? Do you not remember saying, it's been so intense recently. I feel like I've been dissociating. I had a random panic attack on the bathroom floor earlier. I haven't had a panic attack in years. I'm very overwhelmed by all of this. I wish I could have done more to protect Devin, Deshaun, and Lavelle from everything. There's nothing I can do now. It's all too late, but I've been thinking of them every single day. I need to take care of myself, so I'm trying. I'll return eventually. I'm sorry, I can't handle it. Please take good care and hug your loved ones deeply. That's all we have each other. Oh my god, this is such performative garbage. The same day you tweeted this, I guess you decided to do an edible in honor of them. And notice how many I statements are here. There's nothing I can do. I have been thinking of them. I need to take care of myself. I had a panic attack. I've been dissociating. I'm overwhelmed. All of these thoughts are so self-centered. And yeah, I really hope you were thinking of them every day considering it's been not even a day after they died and you want to make it seem like you've been doing much more than you actually are. Who the fuck takes POC murder victims' deaths and makes it about themselves? But this is the same person who asked for donations on Juneteenth despite having no idea what it was until they met me. And the year after we break up, they knew they would look bad doing that again. So instead opted to do it on Pride Month. So so instead of taking money from black people who actually needed it, mind you, I never asked for donations and I'm actually black. Let's take money from queer folks who need it instead. Classic Omnia, everyone. Being black is a brand to them. They don't even know if they are black. And you can't argue with me on that. I lived with them. So whatever bullshit Omnia tries to make up, it's only to the flag from the truth, like most things they say. Surely left out all of the important context of that specific clip, didn't you? Didn't mention how you went on this entire rant about how everything is physically affecting you, only to get high a day later, and claiming that you're thinking about the victims every day as if it's been more than a week since they died. I'm willing to concede to the fact that I don't even think of Etika every day. I don't even think of my own mother, who died the same way Etika did, every day either. And that's my mom. I surely didn't get high after both of them died either. And I had to witness my own mother's dead body and the grief that followed beyond that. I was the one who had to let everyone know that she died. I had to be strong enough in order to do all of that. Don't speak on me, bro. You can be disappointed all you want, but the only person you need to be disappointed in is yourself. Surely had no problem going to news outlets to speak about the situation either. I and many other students at UVA are utterly devastated by the events that happened last night. Hana, a fourth year student studying global public health and African American studies, told Newsweek, I haven't been able to sleep. I haven't been able to eat, added the 21 year old who has been sheltering at an off campus apartment since Sunday night. Hana is still trying to recognize the reality that three dear students that I may have taken classes with or seen at a party or been my friends slash acquaintances are not here with us anymore. I don't know about y'all, but if after I lost my mother, some tool went to a news outlet and started telling them how they couldn't sleep or eat because my mother is not there with them anymore as if my trauma is some fucking news or they even have the right to be this affected like they even fucking knew my mom i'd be pissed fuck the journalists who even created this article and fuck the people who participated in it on the included let's not forget when hana tweeted out this He's already exposed several aspects about my family life slash situation, mental health, IRL friends, location, and university that I was never comfortable having shared to begin with. He has leaked private conversations we've had with one another that aren't bad under the guise that they are. Crazy how beforehand I'm fucking vilified for letting information be known about their location and university as if this isn't something that Hana publicized themselves, not only on Instagram, but Twitter, but you were so quick to let everybody know about your university when this situation happened at UVA. So, so, but I'm the fucking bad guy though. Like, I just, I don't, I don't fucking get it. It's, it's, it's all convenient. It's so, so convenient. Literally eat my fucking ass, bro. Trauma is not some news to get some random strangers comment on. That space should be reserved for the families and anybody with basic empathy would know to decline and not give their two cents, especially not even a day after it happened. But Omnia was quick to get their little news moment. You had half a mind to stay out of it when it was techno. Wonder what changed. I hope that you and anyone watching this video never has to lose a family member this tragically. And on top of that, ever have to watch some stranger who barely knew your family member talk about how much they can't 
can't sleep and eat now that they're gone. Totally not performative though, right? Wild coming from the person who wants to dictate who makes third party content on their trauma and gets so mad when people treat their trauma as drama gets so pressed when people comment on it or interact with me, but somehow lacks the introspection to see how it's a problem when they do it. I'd go over the rest of these protective order violations, but Omnia can't explain how these are me, nor can they explain how I even sent them a message, but I will address one thing. For one, the person who texted Omnia is not me. And according to their words, if there's no evidence for the claim, it didn't happen. Explain to people how I got your number and explain how I managed to text you while I was in jail. But I will address this. Guys. Kai thinks I'm dumb. Kai thinks I'm stupid. Yes, and I've demonstrated how you are several times in this video. I have a plethora of other adjectives that also start with the letter D, but I think you get the idea. And I'm not. Hi, editing Omnia here. Sorry for starting off this section like that, but bro, I just realized something really big. You can't even schedule tweets on Twitter for iPad, dude. That's not a thing that is physically possible. I would know because I tested it out on my iPad. I know, Omnia. Since you're so curious as to how I scheduled the tweet, it's from this shortcut on my iPad. You're wondering how why the typing style is so different? It's because the tweet was ran through this shortcut. You're wondering why I posted as such a weird time, it's because of the shortcut. You want to know why it's from my iPad? The shortcut. Sorry the truth doesn't adhere to your narrative, but... And no, no one in my life is going to talk to you to help you with your stupid YouTube video. Maybe you should try minding your business and not speculating on how this could possibly be me and actually provide some evidence that it is. On November 17th at 5.07 p.m., while I was incarcerated in a completely different jail after my transfer, I did not do this. Okay, right. Assuming this is correct, assuming he didn't have his phone with him in jail, assuming all the things he states here are accurate, which I won't even argue, I'm inclined to believe myself because like I said, I'll give Kai credit where I think credit is due and press him on things that truthfully make no sense. But the Google Doc sent during the third violation very clearly establishes that this person is Kai. Kai can't deny this. And there would be absolutely no incentive for this number to text me, sorry, hopefully I'll be better in the future, if nothing happened. Meaning if Kai wasn't arrested, this number would have likely not said shit to me again. And for the record, I don't think Kai stuck his fucking iPad up his booty cheeks into jail. Did I just shove my iPad up my ass while I was going through the metal detector? That was a funny visual though. My current hypothesis about this fourth violation is that Kai got someone to post BRB to his Twitter account using his iPad, which he likely left at home. The same person who did that also probably texted me, sorry, I'll be better in the future, nine minutes later. I don't know, that's all I can come up with. For one, like I said, the person who sent you the Google Doc is not me. I'm willing to believe it's you, because again, it's physically impossible for me to text you on November 16th. And like I said in the video, explain to everyone, Omnia, how the fuck I managed to get someone to text you on my behalf, how the fuck I managed to get your number, and and how the fuck I managed to break the protective order two entire times without the police finding out. Especially how I managed to break it while I was incarcerated. I can't get into contact with anyone without my phone, Omnia, and I can't text anyone either. If I didn't shove my iPad up my ass, then what did I do? Explain it. Because need I remind you, if someone can't provide evidence of their claims, they never happen. Your words, not mine. The dates make sense because I never fucking did this. You can't definitively claim that this is me because there's no indication that this is me. Regardless of the contents of the doc, which is deleted, interestingly enough, there's no evidence that this is me. Why? Because I didn't fucking do it. But your case was so strong, right? If you can't even connect it to me online, then how did you expect it to work in court? Anyways, that's part four. I'm moving on to part five. Sorry I didn't spend all my time dissecting this 45 minute video. This part is the one that I was looking forward to the most because oh boy is it a doozy. Let's see how Omnia explains how I strangled them. This is a pretty important charge with a lot of implications. Surely they would have evidence for this one, right? After all, this was the charge prosecution wanted me to admit to in the first plea deal, not without me denying the fuck out of it. I'm going to be approaching this video differently than the previous videos in this series because it deals with a lot more sensitive subject matter and to be quite honest with you, I initially had plans to disclose pretty much all of the intimate details about the events of December 3rd, 2021, all of my testimony, what happened at what times, and just 
all of that. But I took a step back for a second and started asking myself if that was truly something I was comfortable doing on my YouTube channel, where I just described the gory details of how I was brutalized by my ex, whether on December 3rd, 2021, or throughout the entire course of our relationship. And well, if I'm being honest and true to myself and the things I truly want or desire out of this, the answer is no. That's not something I want to do. I don't want to do that because I don't want to talk about how inhumanely I was treated that day, how gutted I felt, how empty inside I was, how I didn't feel like I could ever hit more of a rock bottom. I don't need to do that. That's not the point of this series and never was the point of the series. This series was meant to debunk the lies Kai has spread all throughout the duration of our court case. The intention I had with the series was to get the truth about the situation out there and no longer letting Kai spread a false narrative about himself, me, or about the case. I don't need to talk ad nauseum about my own brutalization, assault, or strangulation to do that. The photos that exist that have been posted publicly should speak for themselves. The fact that Kai took a plea deal and pled guilty to assault and battery of a family or household member speaks for itself. In order to obtain that plea agreement, he agrees that he is guilty of committing that crime, which is something we established in the very first video of this series. So, since we can certifiably say that, unless Kai committed a serious act of perjury, which would be a completely separate crime of its own, I think that that is evidence enough of my brutalization that day, and truthfully, I don't see the point of providing further testimony about my strangulation in addition to that, especially because I have demonstrated that I never lied about this situation once, have no incentive to lie about the situation, and that he was indicted for said crimes. That should stand alone as a fact to suggest that the evidence I managed to present in court was sufficient enough to go to trial, and I have historically only ever cared about what happened in the court of law and not the court of public opinion. Again, unlike Kai. So, sorry to disappoint if you got to the end of the video series hoping to hear every gruesome detail of my assault and strangulation, but the thing is, I have dignity. And as much as it's important to me to get this information out there, the parts of this case that hurt me physically, emotionally, mentally, and socially the most are the parts of the case that I'm not yet ready to get into, let alone know if I'll ever want to get into publicly. Nothing. They provide nothing. Why? Because they couldn't even explain it while they were in court during the preliminary hearing. They first claimed that I choked them out by putting my hands around their neck, which makes no sense because if I was able to leave bruises everywhere else on their body, I wonder why I wasn't able to do it on their neck. Also, there was sufficient evidence to accuse me of such, but there wasn't sufficient evidence to convict me of such. What do you think guilty means, Omnia? Don't use my conviction against me, then not apply that same rule set to all the other charges. I was not convicted of strangulation. If I was, I would be in jail. I was not convicted of grand larceny. I was not convicted of each protective order charge. I was not convicted of preventing a 911 call. On top of this, if I needed anger management classes and probation, I would have been assigned that. But interestingly enough, I wasn't. Gonna blame the judge for ignoring nuance again or what? You're a loose cannon. You also claimed on both Twitter and GoFundMe that I straddled you and punched you in the face multiple times, yet your photos don't corroborate that claim. And now, apparently, you were also strangled. You claimed in your police report that you hid in the bathroom for five hours. Then when the preliminary hearing came, it changed to two. When Gabriella got into the picture, suddenly, instead of abusing you, I was also abusing the cats. Wonder why you never thought to mention that before, you know, since my story has to be perfect 24-7. You claim that you only left the bathroom when I went to sleep, but for some reason never thought to take your phone I allegedly took and get help never thought to run out of the apartment or anything when you were asked if you had any markings on your neck from being strangled you said you didn't check despite being in the bathroom for five hours apparently or was it two and just felt like five who knows Omnia you also claimed before I choked you out with my hands I choked you out with your hoodie but I asked my lawyer entertaining the prospect of me doing this to ask you if I pulled your hoodie away or towards your neck you can confirmed I apparently pulled it away. Pull your hoodie away from your neck. How did I choke you that way? You claimed to the police that I took the keys to the apartment despite you having the keys to the apartment and hiding them from me. When asked how I was able to get in and out of the apartment, you changed your story and claimed that I had them. Now, before I continue, you can either lie about this or I can get a copy of your police report and follow this video up with part four, but I don't think I would need to do that. You claimed on GoFundMe you couldn't take it anymore on December 8th. Tell us what it is, Amia, because during 
during the preliminary hearing, you claimed there was no physical violence prior to December 3rd between either of us. You claimed that you never put your hands on me once, yet in court, you claimed that we wrestled for your phone. You also claimed to Valen in DMs that you wrestled to get from under me after I quote, put my weight on you. But you claim you didn't swing once. You didn't touch me at all. Why would I need to hold you away from me if I wasn't defending myself? Almost like I was trying to avoid a conflict. I never took Omnia's phone either. They argue this in the same video, but ignore their publicly available call logs. Once you were asked why it was that you didn't run to get help when I was literally sleeping, you claimed that you were afraid I would run after you, yet for some reason felt safe enough to sleep in the same bed with me shortly afterward, and I mean that in two ways. The reason that I'm able to say all of this is because I took notes during the preliminary hearing while Omnia was stroking their ego for providing probable cause. Little did they know, my camp was celebrating because their statements were so weak. That's why Omnia isn't going to go over the details of the situation because they couldn't even remember it. If I had a nickel for every time I heard, I don't remember, in that courtroom, I'd be a couple dollars richer. But don't you all think it's a little crazy that Omnia is willing to accuse me of something like strangulation and then when asked to provide evidence or explain how I strangled them, they suddenly need to keep it private? Yeah, real truthful, Omnia. And why would you have to remember any of the details when you can just go on the internet and say, hey, he abused me. Everyone believe me. Hey, look at these pictures. This totally ended up the way that I told you guys it happened. There's no questionable aspects of my story whatsoever. There's no reason to because all you need to do is just say, hey, they beat me. And then no, no, no more questions, no more uh, extra prying into the situation. Does anyone need to do? Omnia does not have to do any more work than that. So what's the point of remembering the story? Because all I need is for someone to look at me as a victim. Get the fuck on, bro. I'll stir my claim. Also, a detail that Omnia fails to concede to the public as well is that these photos were taken not on December 3rd, but December 5th, two days after I allegedly beat the shit out of them and choked them out. It's true. The photos I managed to take that I had later posted publicly on December 10th, 2021 were indeed taken on December 5th. Can any of you guess why? Take a guess. Okay. Do you have your guess in mind? I'll tell you why and you let me know if you guessed right. It's because I didn't have my phone on December 3rd or 4th in order to take photos of my bruises because Kai took my phone from me. Yes, you did. Here's your call logs and here's the dates of when you had your phone. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's definitely before December 5th. Also, their call logs aren't in this video. Wonder why. I posted them in mine though. Crazy. Not only that, but do you want to see the earliest text messages I have between Kai and I on my phone? Let me scroll to the very top of our text messages just for you, without doxing any identifying information, of course. Oh wow, would you look at that. December 5th, 2021 at 8 a.m. Where did all my text messages go before that? It's almost as if Kai took my phone and deleted all the text messages we shared between us prior to December 5th because he didn't want me to have access to or take screenshots of our text messages on December 3rd. I wonder why that could possibly be the case. Also. So can I just say as an aside, it's so insanely funny to me that the first couple texts Kai sends me after clearing all of our prior text messages on my phone just to scrub my access to the text we sent on December 3rd are links to some Airbnbs in Anaheim, California because he promised to take me to Disneyland to make up for the shit he did to me that weekend. Insane. It's almost as though he's, what's that word again? Love bombing me? in order to maybe dissuade me from coming out about the shit he did to me two days prior? Bro, oh my God. You know what was coming up during this time? January 1st, January 11th, and December 25th. January 1st was our anniversary. January 11th is Omnia's birthday, and December 25th is Christmas. I was making a lot of money at the time and wanted to simply take Omnia to Disney. So we never went since we broke up beforehand. I even wanted to go to Disney. But please scroll down and show them the rest of the text. They're definitely contradictory to the whole I didn't want him to stay in my apartment for a second longer, claim. And I'm not the one who deleted your messages, but thanks for blaming that on me though. It wouldn't be off brand. Either you deleted them sometime after we broke up or something, but I'm not the one who removed them. You know what we were arguing about on December 3rd? Hana creating double standards, pretending those double standards don't exist, and instead of taking accountability, arguing around it. Holy shit, I'm going through the same thing now. December 5th. 
2021. I write, in case I do go to the police with this information, I want to write this on the day I took these pictures so there is no mistake and so you know that my story doesn't and will not change. I know victims aren't believed that much so I want to make it easy for everyone to know exactly who did this to me. It is Kai White. His mother is blank. His brother is blank. His sister is blank. His online name is Kai Weiss, and I used to be his girlfriend. He assaulted me and punched me and elbowed me in the face multiple times, pried my hands off of my phone when I wanted to call the police, when I was screaming in the bathroom vent trying to call the people who live upstairs to get help and to please help me. He got my own speaker that I had bought, used my phone to connect through Bluetooth, and played a playlist I created at max volume to drown out the sounds of my begs and pleas for someone, anyone, to come help me or save me. He did this all to me on Friday, December 3rd, 2021. I slept on the couch while he refused to leave and sleep in my bed. This is all a true story, and he's an abuser, a physical one, a verbal one, and an emotional one. If I ever do come forward with this story, this is what happened to me that day, and this is what he did to me. All of the bruises, scars, scratches, or anything else I documented here is a result of Kai White. I really hope you can believe me. Written at 1.30 p.m. Yeah. This is the same guy so many notable creators want to rub shoulders with in this fucking community. It's no wonder I don't fuck with anyone who fucks with him. It's no wonder I never looked back after I left. Ironically enough, the story did change. The police looked for witnesses to confirm Omnia's testimony was accurate, and no one confirmed them. Here, in their journal entry, they claimed I punched and elbowed them in the face multiple times. Yet publicly, they claim I straddled them, strangled them, punched them in the face, and elbowed them in the face. Their police statement also doesn't corroborate to what's written in their journal. Go figure, Omnia. I wonder why no one believes you. Also, why are my family members' names listed here? I've wanted this specific part of the video to play because I want a genuine explanation as to why my sister, my brother, and my mom um, all of which who have nothing to do with this situation are all listed here. What was your goal? What were you hoping to gain in doxing my family members? You're a piece of shit. You want everyone in the world to look at you as some kind of victim, yet not a single moment during this entire situation have you ever wondered why people don't like you. You're more concerned about who's rubbing shoulders with me, how much money you can get out of me in this situation, making jokes and controlling who is able to talk about your supposed trauma, and don't even have a half a mind to explain how it all happened consistently. Because it's too private. The only person who should be taking the L is you. But I'll rant about this later. This section of the video is providing whatever proof I have of his theft and this really crazy screenshot that will help you truly understand what Kai did to delete my channel. Let's start with the channel deletion because I've never leaked this screenshot before and I really want to thank the person who sent this to me at the time that they did because it more accurately paints a picture of what had happened on December 8th after Kai was served with the EPO. This one requires a little background knowledge but assuming you watched all the videos prior to this one you should be prepared well and know everything you need to in order to understand. This is the proof I have that corroborates my hypothesis about the channel deletion. On December 8th, 2021 at 6.55 p.m., I received this Instagram DM from one of my subscribers. They said, Hey Omnia, I just found your Instagram account, but I've been subbed to your YouTube for about a year or two, and I found that your channel is just gone. I was even watching your videos two hours ago. I wanted to inform you in case that wasn't you. If that was your doing, I hope everything is okay. I wish you all the best, queen. And wow, it's insane how their spidey senses could just tell that it wasn't me. Some of my subscribers are truthfully heaven sent. To the person who sent this to me when they did, you are literally an angel from above. Bro, Omnia wrote this. Notice how with every other DM, Omni is able to cite who exactly said what to them and is so detail-oriented to get every facet of the information out there, even willing to take videos of our text messages. Yet somehow, this magical person with spidey senses decided to go DM them on Instagram, not Twitter, to tell them that their channel is deleted. I would love to see some identification on who this is because I'm so surprised that this magical person suddenly existed during the time you needed to make this video. And you just didn't think at any point in time to check your Instagram DMs within this entire situation? And how convenient that they texted you at exactly 6.55. So they were just watching your videos two hours ago and decided to go back to your channel for some odd reason? This is Omnia. How desperate do you have to be to do some shit like this? But this is the same person who has like seven Twitter accounts and three YouTube alts. Who is surprised? Pull up the email that YouTube sent you about your channel not being compromised. So either you're admitting you deleted your own channel or 
the screenshot just isn't real. Give me a fucking break, dude. They did that for me. After surveying the apartment for some time, the officer taking note of the state Kai left it in, me finding out about the protective order violation and reporting it to the officer, me attempting to find Gabby, packing up a bag to go to the hotel, and then commuting there, the officer and I arrived at the hotel about an hour and a half later. Here's a screenshot I took of me joining the Wi-Fi, I guess? Unsure why I took this screenshot, but I'm thanking myself for it now. It was taken at 10.56 p.m. on the 8th. About 30 minutes later, I'm still at the hotel, but you know what I'm doing? I'm FaceTiming that friend that Kai was so unjustifiably angry at me for talking to in video three. No one who was scared shitless tells everyone they know about what happened to them, let alone FaceTimes their friend the same night. And you know what happens while I'm FaceTiming that friend? This. At 11.26 p.m., I received the alert that my Apple ID and phone number was being used for iMessage and FaceTime on a new phone. But the thing is, it wasn't a new phone. It was my old phone. The one that was at the apartment before I left to go to the police department on the 8th. You can see the K at the end of the name. The alert said, if you recently signed into that old iPhone's name, you can ignore this notification. And bro, I immediately screenshotted that while on FaceTime with my friend. I obviously didn't ignore it, started freaking out about it to my friend. And that's when I realized Kai stole my old iPhone. Again, remember, I'm in a hotel away from my home and I didn't have access to the phone whatsoever. Besides, how the fuck would I set up my old iPhone while I'm on FaceTime with someone else? <laughs> You set up the phone while you were on FaceTime with this person. This isn't proof. I get the same notifications from my own devices. Not only that, but if that's your phone, it should have already been set up with your Apple ID. So why would you receive this notification? And on top of that, if your Apple ID and phone number are now being used on that phone, then that means it should be in your Find My app. Yet somehow there's no screenshot of that phone's location. But I totally stole your phone though. And if I stole your iPad, why didn't you get a notification for that either? Unfortunately, Omnia doesn't know how Apple products work, but at this point, I'm not surprised. The thing that really gets to me is their tinfoil on how I stole their Switch games. But Kai didn't just steal that. He also stole my yellow Nintendo Switch Lite and all the games I had bought with it. Again, prior to ever meeting Kai. He stole my Nintendo 3DS XL and every single game that I bought with that as well. But you know, Kai, of course, insists he never did that. He had the audacity to steal my Nintendo Switch which I didn't. And before he claims he gifted that to me when I bought it for myself, I agree with this. They definitely bought their Switch, but I didn't steal it. But you know what I think is interesting? You know what I think is funny? I'll just let the clip speak for itself. The amount of money, because I did trade-ins in order to get my Switch OLED, that I spent on my Switch OLED was like a little bit over $50. I didn't have to spend a lot of money, bro. Niggas think I don't know what to do with my own fucking money. Like, bro, I know what I'm doing. So Kai means to tell me that he spent a little over $50 on a Switch OLED, which cost $360 at GameStop because of trade-ins? What the hell did he Bruh. trade in? Because he clearly didn't trade in his other two Switches or any of his Joy-Cons, Pro Controllers, or games of his own. I can take a stab at it. It was probably every single fucking game I owned prior to Kai. It was probably every single fucking console I owned before meeting Kai. And you know what? I not only predicted that being the case, but I also did the hard work of figuring out if this was even a feasible or plausible option. And you know what? It very much is. If I add up all the games and consoles I've bought that magically disappeared from my apartment as soon as Kai was forced to leave it after the EPO was served on him, it comes out to be a total of $662.19 in those receipts alone. But you know, when you go to GameStop to trade games and consoles in, they always take them in at a much lower price than you bought them at because, well, it's GameStop. And you know what the maximum regular value store credit Kai could have gotten on all of these items were? Let me calculate it for you. $333. And well, that being the maximum he could have gotten off of trading all my items in is a fucking good indicator that he probably did trade my shit in. With a margin of error of about $33-ish, adjusting for lower quality and any other outliers, I'd say when the margin is that fucking close, you would really have to reach to try and say that him trading in my stuff is inaccurate. In other words, that's a pretty fucking good estimate and falls right about where I would assume it would 
downfall if he did trade in my games and consoles alone. Again, keeping in mind he didn't trade anything of his own. It's evidenced in his own photos of his stuff. He can't just turn up $300 worth of store credit at GameStop from nowhere. But this is Kai we're talking about. He'll never admit to any of this for a second, but I see it for what it is. Bitch, since you're so fucking concerned about what games I have on my TV stand, let me tell you. The games that you see on my TV stand are Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pokemon Violet, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Two of those games were not even out by the time I left the apartment, and I already proved I paid for the other two. Since you're so concerned about what I traded in, I traded in my old Switch and some of my and my brother's games. If I turned in everything that you expected me to turn in, Omnia, for I wouldn't have paid anything for the Switch. This is what I mean by mind your fucking business. Stop going onto my Twitter profile and prying into my fucking life. For someone who claims they don't keep up with me and I'm obsessed in stalking them, you sure are doing the same to me. I don't care about your shit, bro. And I've been saying that since the beginning. I literally gave you my old 3DS and Pokemon Brilliant Diamond feeling bad for you. You know better than anyone while we dated, I had more than three fucking PS4 games. And the ones on my TV stand are Nier Automata, Kingdom Hearts, and Grand Theft Auto V. But I didn't turn in any of my own games, right? You're supposed to be giving evidence that I stole your shit, not speculating, oh, well, maybe he traded in my games. <laughs> I have money, bro. Like, if I wanted to pay full price, I would have. I am so tired of this accusation. It has reached stupid levels at this point. I do not have Omnia's games. I do not have Omnia's belongings. Tough luck, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I can't even post a celebratory picture of my apartment without this idiot thinking I'm stealing from them. Just because I am able to afford the things that I want does not mean that any of my purchases have anything to do with you. You wish I needed your shit. I don't. Again, to him, it's a more likely option that I'm framing him for protective order violations during arguably some of the most traumatic moments of my recent life. And considering I proved he took my iPhone, that was $646 alone. With my consoles and games, that's $1,308. Let's not even start on the iPad or the Apple Pencil or the speaker or the Apple Pencil case or the iPad case or the wireless charger or the Roomba or you know what? I think you get the point. But you know, I think some people fail to realize that the things I bought far before I ever met Kai weren't the only things that were stolen. In fact, Kai seems to not understand the law of gift giving and what it means when someone gives a gift. As in, when you give a gift, the ownership of that item is then transferred over to the person you gave said gift to. You would think that that was common sense, but apparently it isn't to Kai. Here's a screenshot from a thread Kai created back on December 10th 2021 speaking to just that. He says, all the clothing they said I quote unquote stole from them, all of it is clothing that I paid for. They're mad now that I didn't allow them to keep all the things I gave them. Even those glasses they're wearing now are items that I arranged and also put in my money for. The shoes and caps I got for you, all those games I bought, those are mine now. I respected the wishes of the protective order. Regardless of how bogus it is, and the police have informed me to continue respecting the order Order and let them be. If they wanted to keep all my things, they should have thought about that before making a false accusation. <sighs> These tweets aged like wine. False accusation, he said. <laughs> Laughable. The Kai in these screenshots must be so disappointed in the Kai of today, pleading guilty or whatever. Ugh. But do y'all want to hear a funny little anecdote? I showed these screenshots to my victim's protective aide at the very beginning of this case when Kai first started his Twitter tirades, and she looked at me in disbelief. Just pure shock in her eyes. Nothing in her head but just wonder and confusion. So I asked her what was wrong because she was having just the hardest time getting a word out. And after finally mustering up her words, she stared at me blankly and said, he just confessed to theft. And <laughs> I just thought that was really funny. She was shocked that he would ever even say some shit like this publicly. And you know why? It's because she knows the law, baby. And I'm gonna read it to you. I'll link this article below in case you suddenly feel compelled to get into the nitty gritty of the law of gifts and gift giving, but the article says, a gift is a voluntary, irrevocable transfer of property from one person to another without consideration. The giver of the gift is the donor, while the receiver is the donee. In addition to being irrevocable, there are three additional elements that a gift must meet in order to be valid. One, the donor must intend to make a present gift of the 
the property. Two, the donor must actually deliver the property to the donee. Three, the donee must accept the gift. It's crazy because like, let's use my fucking prescription glasses for example, right? Kai didn't buy those for me. He said he quote unquote put in his money for. Essentially, he paid for half of it out of at least what I thought was the kindness of his heart. I need those glasses. They only work for my eyes. So Kai pitched in to help me buy it, which by the way, for the record, I never asked him to do. He extended that offer unconditionally and I accepted the offer. I almost regret it now though, considering how transactional the nigga is. Or let's forget the glasses that are only meant to be used for my specific eyesight. Let's take the shoes, clothes, and caps he mentioned. Have y'all ever seen a photo of Kai and me together sitting or standing or just side by side? The guy is huge. He has at least a full head on me at all times. He stands at about six feet and I'm pushing 5'2 or 5'3 max. What shoes are you buying that aren't meant for my size seven in women's ass feet? What clothes are you buying that aren't meant for my shorter arms or legs? Besides, Kai literally says, and I quote, the shoes and caps I got for you, indicating the intent to make a present gift of the property, which is condition one of gifts. Delivering these shoes to me, letting me wear them and saying these are for you, I bought them for you, makes it a gift. He really has the audacity to say they're meant mad now that I didn't allow them to keep all the things I gave them. As if that's not inherently theft. A gift is irrevocable, dude. That means after you gave them to me, they are now legally mine. There's no clearer way to spell it out. Congrats on confessing to felony theft though, I guess. Imagine saying, I didn't allow them to keep the things I bought for them to have after we broke up. Like, dude, you are a pussy ass bitch. Bro, you went on this entire stupid ass rant about gift giving as if you didn't literally steal my mail, steal my shirts I had shipped to the apartment, and keep every gift you gave me. Who is really transactional? I don't have your glasses, bitch. I never took them. Why are you complaining? <laughs> And I know you're not sitting here talking about what clothes did I take that you fit as if you don't wear t-shirts and shirts two times your size. Come on, Hana, I know you better than that. You obviously know all of this, so why did you even say any of this? And since you're so curious about where the shoes are, I gave them to my mom. I'm not trying to wear your fucking shoes, man. You want me to care about that shit so bad. I just don't. And I already did an entire section in my own video about how your gifts are transactional too. Like literally get off your soap box. If you're not going to give me my shit back, you don't need yours. Jesus Christ, man, just buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> the shoes were 80 bucks. You shouldn't need to ask your audience to buy you some shoes, dog. You're not that broke. I'm so glad I'm not dating this person anymore. This video is a fucking roller coaster. Omnia ends the video off going on this stupid temper tantrum about commentary YouTubers interacting with me. We're there encouraging me to complete it. Kai Weiss is a dangerous man. This is not some poor, innocent, uwu guy who is majorly misunderstood and has been smeared by me, Sen. This is not some silly, goofy, drama where you watch every single video my abuser makes and comments first on jar. Kai's charges weren't dismissed because I talked too much about it on twitter.com Lyo Convoy. Maybe stop parroting everything Lyo tells you and get a mind of your own hopeless peaches. Maybe don't ask for a convicted abuser's side in their public stream Harley TBS. Same for you, Sister Zio. Every single one of you creators publicly associating with him, getting into his streams, asking for his discord, getting in calls with him doing the absolute most. Where was this same energy for me? Why didn't any of y'all ask for my side? Why didn't any of y'all extend a hand towards me when the going got tough? You all want to champion yourselves as people who condemn abusers, but your behavior publicly and privately indicates nothing of the sort. As a matter of fact, your behavior demonstrates nothing but the fact that you condone abusers. This is the same guy who assaulted me in my own home, called it a false accusation for the entire duration of our court case, then ended up pleading guilty to it to avoid trial. Lied about whether he actually pled guilty or took an Alfred plea. Lied about how his charge will be expunged from his record. Lied about violating my protective order four times. Lied about stealing from me and preventing me from calling 911 and literally every other thing I alleged he did. And it's not like it wasn't abundantly obvious from the beginning. It's not like I didn't tell every single one of you exactly what he did to me. Told the truth from the very beginning. Remained consistent from the very start. Was transparent about my intentions since December of 2021. I never lied. He 
is vile. He's vile. And you know what? Since you all are so confident about publicly associating with a guy, I hope you feel really fucking proud of yourselves for falling victim to a narcissistic smear campaign and simply listening to the loudest person in the room instead of waiting for the victim of his crimes to say anything tangible or produce anything to substantiate their claims. I'm unsure if it's because you're impatient or just hate me, but either way, a special and colossal fuck you goes out to all y'all. And before you run to Twitter, don't hit my DMs with an apology. Save it. Maybe use that time you would have spent saying sorry to me privately on how you're gonna explain this to the rest of your audience members now that this has been made public. Anyways, y'all be easy. Bye. I don't like any of these niggas at worst, and I've only talked to some of them at best. Which is it, Omnia? Were there good moments? Are you not trying to ruin my life? Am I a danger or am I not a danger? I love how you tried to replicate the same rant that I did on you in my last video that you conveniently skirted over because that also had incriminating evidence on you. But I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but people are allowed to think that I'm not an abuser. I am so done with this situation simply due to the fact that it has completely devolved into Omnia getting mad that they can't control the narrative anymore and that they've been questioned on literally everything. Lyo is not wrong. If you shut up on Twitter, the case would have went differently. When Harley and Zio showed up to my chat, they didn't do anything wrong either. If anything, they were in a call with a bunch of other people simply just to watch my stream, but at this point, I don't care. Those niggas is weird. If you're going to make a situation public, obviously people are going to have an opinion on it. People don't believe me, I don't fucking care. People don't believe you, get over it. Why are you so mad that people have opinions? Why are you mad that people look at both sides? That's how you get to the truth. That is literally the point of our court hearing. People have to hear me out in order to know you're not fucking lying. You go on and on about a fucking conviction, but never say, oh, he pled guilty to the seven other charges, because that's not what happened. Oh, he was convicted of the seven other charges, because that's not what happened. Your behavior is the behavior of a person who has lost control. And for someone who says that they're so satisfied with this outcome, all of your actions after the fact have been completely the opposite. And to the content creators watching my videos and then turning around and being like, oh, but we weren't nice to Kai, it takes nothing to ignore me. I'm looking at you, Malice. If you watch my videos, who gives a fuck? If you talk to me, who gives a fuck? Why is Omnia the end all be all of who defines my character like I don't have plenty of friends and acquaintances outside of them? I mean, really, you don't like any of these niggas as is, so why do you care about what they're doing as if being acquainted with fucking Omnia of all people is something that should be valued? Like, oh boo hoo, Omnia doesn't like me. Oh God, how will I go on? What is your goal, to cancel them? And another thing, why are you talking to these people like you're their mother? Who talks to a bunch of strangers online and tells them, don't apologize to me, think about how you're going to explain this to your audience. Like you're entitled to an apology or public statement at all. You talk about a narcissistic smear campaign, but only a narcissist would think that they're important enough for someone to give them an apology before they even received it. Literally get over yourself. This whole victim mentality has boosted your ego so fucking much that you think that unless everyone is with you, they're against you. And and I can't help you with that. Maybe just let this shit go. You talk shit about this community nearly every video. Maybe you should take some advice from your supposed abuser and just leave. Maybe you'll find some peace that way, Omnia. Or are you too scared that when people don't look at you as a victim, you will fade into irrelevancy? What does it matter, bro? It's the art commentary community. I am so sure that your fans who don't respond to every tweet that you release are so fucking tired of reading about Kai Weiss. I'm tired of reading about myself. What do you want? You're not stopping me from living my life. You're not taking Gabby from me. You're not stopping me from dating anyone else. You're not stopping me from becoming everything you thought I wouldn't be. So what is the point of any of this? You think the next person I date is in the art commentary community? You think my friends give a fuck about people who draw pictures and talk shit? No, because anyone who isn't part of this terminally online cesspool understands that people are flawed and not everyone is squeaky clean and that's okay. These same people understand I am not abusive and judge me based on my character. It is not my fault you missed out on that, and if you didn't, you shouldn't be bothered by what I or any other content creator is doing in regards to me, but stay miserable. You tried stopping me from getting a job. 
I have one. This charge stopped me from getting an apartment, but I still got one. Tough shit, Omnia. I am the only ex you had that you couldn't control. Sorry my life didn't go in the direction you hoped it would. Sorry that even despite coming out about me, your lies and individual behaviors fucked you. I promised myself that no matter what you threw at me, I would overcome it, and that is exactly what I did, and now I am even better for it. I already lost my mom and got vilified by the community. Nothing you niggas can say can be any worse than that. So I'm going back to being happy and I wish you nothing but help and healing because subscribers, internet likes, and validation is not going to heal the void that you have inside of you. Instead of focusing so much on how your abuse changed you, maybe start putting that energy into something productive and get some business. And maybe one day you'll think to delete the five videos you have of me plastered on your channel because every time you scroll down your videos, there I am. Good luck with that. And good luck to the next sucker who chooses this fool to be their partner. And I'll be back sometime later to talk about something stupid. And P.S. If you want people to take your video series seriously, maybe don't put 27 ads in the video. It's giving broke and maybe you should do something about that because Cinnamon isn't here to help you anymore. But I'm apparently a broke, bum-ass nigga who never went to college and makes less money than you, so you never needed my help in the first place. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, y'all can continue to argue amongst yourselves because I am good. Bye.